Oh, there he is. There he hey, is. Dude. What's up, man? What's up? What's going Mr. on? Mr. Sister Nino. What's going on, brother? What's good? Are you are you staying at the same weight or are you downsizing? Yeah, downsizing. What Fuck you, you Milos. <laughs> you go right away, you're putting me down. <laughs> I, it, it looks like guy, but much smaller. Like what's happening? I'm like one. I'm like 190. You look good the other day in in New Jersey. He looks good now. Uh, I'm small, man. I used to walk around at like 230. Yeah, but don't you <laughs> but don't you feel good though? Um, um, yeah, I do. I I I feel I I feel better in the sense that like I'm I, I was never like stiff, but I'm more agile. It's easier. Like I I jog outside a couple days a week. Oh, like wow. I, it's, it's, I'm more like, you know, I, I was an athlete my whole life, so I never really got unathletic, but this makes me more athletic than I was like able to do more shit that I, I couldn't do when I was competing. Yeah. Bent you down know. in the shower and wash your feet without holding your without life I, and stuff like tie, that. Yeah. Tie my shoes without fucking yeah. huffing and puffing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Listen guys, well, before. What was the heaviest? Huh? What was the heaviest? 242. Yeah. That's the 242. Before we well, go, five, five be, before before we start the podcast, I want to address something from last week. Uh oh. Yeah. No. Uh oh. No. You know, because I, I uh, uh, Milo With sent me? me Milo sent me a message from Silvio. About, addressed to you. Huh? Addressed to you. Yeah. Explain. Explain to, explain to me exactly what, what 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 that was. You didn't. You didn't get it though. You didn't get it. Yeah. Well, I, I got I, it on my he Instagram. Came, he can't write to me. Yeah, I, I got on Instagram that uh, he very much regrets uh, being on the. Uh, Did a you pod- see the podcast, guy? Did you see the podcast? I saw. I, I see parts of it. Yeah. Well, I saw the part where you guys like went back and forth, but I didn't understand what the fuck was going well, on. Well, here's the thing: when somebody comes on my podcast, it doesn't matter what podcast. If you come on, and I know you for thirty years or twenty years or whatever, and you're yeah. going to lie from the first minute to the last minute. I have a problem with that. What was he lying about? Well, he, well, he, he lied about a few things, but the first thing that I think he lied about is where he mentioned it, and you know, and it doesn't matter. I mean, sh- I mean, Sean Ray likes to have people pay for his meals. That's okay, but I, he says Sean Ray lived off of him, which I think is the biggest bullshit. He said starting starting the podcast. Number one, number two. Then he goes on, and I, nobody asked him for that. He says he's fucking won the Olympic gold medal in weightlifting at 17 years old. Who the Who? fuck are you talking to? You talking to us? We know you. He said he he, he said he won. Not the only Olympic did gold he me- say, not only did he say he won the Olympic gold medal, he said that his fucking record stood for twelve years. I I won the Super Bowl, bro. Let me tell you something. So all the other lies, because I know he's been lying since I know this guy. Even in the message that he sent to Milos, he said, "Yeah, I I called him a rat at one point. I didn't call him a rat. He he need to eat." That's another lie. He's even lying when he texts. Isn't this the guy that beat the shit out of his wife? Exactly. And then, and then he goes on to say that, yeah, you said uh, you need to eat. And then after four months, I was a better IFB, in IFB bodybuilding than you. Who the fuck? Is, he's lying again. <laughs> he's still lying. Did you guys go uh, head to head? No, I don't talk to this guy. For what? I don't need well, to I mean, talk. You guys, I don't need guys, to talk to anybody. I don't need to talk to anybody who will lie at you and sit there like this I is mean, the way, this is, this the way he, it is. Did he beat you over and over in competitions? Where? I mean. Where? I don't know. I was just wondering because he said yeah. he passed he, you. In four like months. I said, yeah, he was bigger than you too, Dennis. The, the, yeah, the thing is, this is the way I feel right now. As a person, I thought he was actually cool. But he just lies too damn much about well, everything it's not only about own, this DJ. but when he said the gold man he won the gold medal that's when i said wait a minute you won a gold medal that's <laughs> some fucking it. real big shit google it i did i googled it while i'm on the podcast i said that's what i would have done i said i said silvio when did you win the gold medal he said 1980 in south korea i look it up 1980 was the winter olympics so maybe he was ski jumping too i don't know so then, <laughs> then then I said, listen, 1980 was Winter Olympics. Oh, okay, then he changed it to 98, 88. And then I looked, yeah, they had the Summer Olympics in South Korea, which he said. And I said, what category? He said 64 kilos. I looked it up, 60 to 67. I said, Stefan Kuntz from Germany won the gold medal. And then he said, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, 
He is 1975 or 77. He said he's, according, yeah, yeah. He according said according he said he's born 77. So in 88, he, he was 11 he, years when uh, he won the gold medal. That, that's another thing that uh, for sure he doesn't tell his age. But either way, he would be two, three, four, five years old, or at max he would be 11 years old in 88. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, but but uh, guy or Chris Dennis, I was 20. If he if he won Olympic games. Would we Not know? games, the Olympic hey? medal. This is fucking huge. No, no, no. Yeah, the Olympic gold medal. Would you know the the date, hour, and a minute, and the country, and the population, and the fucking you know language? Of <laughs> I that, wouldn't know yeah. everything. I wouldn't of tell course. you. Hey, I wouldn't tell you. You can look on my Instagram. Yeah, you can look on the Instagram because he did lift uh, above, you know, like something in the garage that, somewhere. Yeah. So it was obvious lie. And it was Chris, so don't laugh. To say garage. what you got to say, man. I didn't see it. I didn't you didn't see it. it? No, you didn't. The, you got to yeah, watch the podcast. It was on the podcast Anyways, you know, no, guys, I didn't. Oh, I, I didn't, no, I didn't, I didn't see the. I didn't see the Instagram where he was lifting over his head. I didn't see it either. That uh, Kyle put it on the yeah. podcast. So listen, you can say whatever you listen. Lie to me about you made the thousand instead of a hundred. Lie about that. I don't give a shit. But once you come on either. here, once you come on and talk to us and tell us you won the Olympic gold medal. With 70, at 17 years old, and your record stood 12 years, that's huge. You can't come on here thinking we fucking idiots. That shows what kind of character he has. Exactly. Kind of that shows us exactly that you talk to everybody like they're fucking idiots. Yeah. And then he has the nerves to write, said, I need to take the podcast down. Fuck you. Oh, he said that? Yes. Well, he, why? Because he, because he got caught. He got caught at yeah, the because he's, because, because he's probably looked real stupid. And he's going to show you the proofs. He's going to show me the proof. So, listen, okay. This is be like, show me the fucking medal, you idiot. Yeah, show yeah. me the medal. <laughs> listen, okay, this is for Silvio. Silvio, if you show me the gold medal and a picture where you stand on that fucking step, you want the gold medal, I will fucking publicly around. apologize fucking on my knees. Oh. This is to you, Silvio. And don't come on here and tell me, oh, it's on now. You have a podcast. I have a forum. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, there was there was so uncomfortable. It's so obvious. Right? <sighs> so I know where that was going. I, I just tried to brush it off and say, okay, okay. Yeah, I was going to go in. Listen, I, <laughs> guy. I was yeah. gonna, wait, are, are we live? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, not live. Yeah, yeah, not live, but it's going to air. <laughs> Listen, I was going to go in on him, but Milos said, stop, stop me. And I thought, did I miss something? <laughs> because I was going to go in. I'm looking there. I said, Why do you? No, 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 no. You don't feel bad for the guy holding the gun, Milos. Exactly. Sorry. No, 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 you know, you don't feel bad for the guy holding the gun. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I'm the first one to jump I in. Was, hey, after all, he was a guest, right? So he was a guest. I was, unco he, I was uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, I was uncomfortable too. And I said, like, oh, this is going to go super bad. I mean, it's going to come to the point. Listen, just, but, okay, Milos, I'm a but liar. Milos, are you okay with somebody lying in your face? No, of course not. You know how I am. You are I normally, them. But you are normally I the person. Them. You are normally the person that would come straight forward and say, "Hey," and then yeah, you didn't. Say like, Chris, yeah. Chris didn't say a damn thing. Yeah, he was yeah, just yeah, sitting there. No, because I didn't. I was just. Like, he was I didn't know what. The, <laughs> hey, Chris, you always. I, did, I didn't know I was. Cause I was trying to believe. Well, I was just like, man, let me try to do the math. I was like, damn. It's I was not like, about believe that. It's, listen, it's not even about that. Wait a minute. I'm like, for me, 11 years old. Guy, dude, guy. For me, it's, it's this. The Olympic gold medal is up here. This is the top of the top. Yeah. yeah. You win the Olympic gold medal. We should all know that. This should be. It, be it, it, this would, would it, be. It's probably something Bob would have announced when he this like just like he said. Magazine. This is a U.S. vet. This has been like an Olympic gold medalist, no. Silvio Samuel. Like he's, I'm sure, you know. Yeah, hey, hey. <laughs> but now this dude comes on. Posing routine at Olympia with the gold medal around him. If he did I would that. wear that thing around my neck, <laughs> like if flavor flame at the Olympics. <laughs> and he's going to sit here and keep saying yes, and he changing the dates, changing the years, changing everything. That's just weird. That just, just shows just, me it's that just weird. Is, that, that shows me uh, that this guy has no issues lying and even getting caught, and he's still. It's like if you're gonna moment. lie to that extent, the little lies you must tell on a daily basis are fucking uh, ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I don't want to waste. Much, I don't want to waste much lie. more time about this guy. You know what I'm saying? But he's trying to send messages to people, threatening. That if I don't take DJ, pop, at the end of the day, if, if you know your truth and you know what's what's right and what's wrong, let him say whatever the fuck he wants. Yeah, he can. I, I don't give a shit. Because you can put your head down on your pillow at night knowing that you told the tr your truth and, and it's right. And he can tell whatever truth he wants and have to put his head down at night and fucking yeah. 
pray to whoever it is he prays to and fucking that's yeah, I don't know what this is. I was just trying to figure out is this right? Is you that... know I don't do well with liars. You know the oh, whole me fun right thing when Sean said stuff about road and I, I don't I don't fare well with liars. So yeah. I you know but, I, but, I but he started he started off like that when he said that Sean lift off of him. And I only thought that they trained together because that's what I heard at one point. You know, how about, so uh, I asked him about that. Huh? How about Mr. Olympia on, uh, on uh, yeah, uh, and the same thing. Business. You know, when I first met him back when he was still an amateur, he gave me his name card. His name card says, says five time Mr. Olympia. <laughs> and I told him, I said, I, listen, you don't want to do that. You don't want to tell people you're Mr. <laughs> Olympia because I was a pro. He was still an amateur. And then I told him, don't do it. You know, just as an advice. That was my advice to him. Yeah, and he still comes on the podcast, and I mentioned. I said, "You remember when I met you, and I told, I gave you my first advice, saying don't don't give this to people that you're a five time Olympia." Yeah, but I, he's saying that he won the Olympia five times. It's like an amateur Olympia. That wasn't even out there back then. So he wow. still so he just he can't he just, just say, he yeah, just he I, just can't. So he's a pathological liar. Yes, yeah. exactly. Listen, That's exactly what he is. Probably born listen, and raised that way. I don't know. That's crazy. Yeah, but but it's one thing. It could be. In Italy or in Nigeria, some amateur contest. It's in his fucking dreams. I know, but it was just back call it Mr. Olympia. But, but Milos, I know, but he said it was connected to the IBB. That's that's when he crossed the line. Milos, there was no Mr. O uh, Miss Amateur <laughs> Olympia back then. Of course not. No, uh, so, not it in was just in his mind. He wanted Milos to is speak. trying to make his Milos is trying to buffer his lie a little bit. <laughs> no, 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 no. He, can, he, he might win. Listen, you know, in my street over here in Duncan P. Court. I can organize the Mr. Olympia contest in my federation. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. He won. He won a lot of amateur shows. He probably won almost all of the amateur shows he entered. That's I told him the same thing. Lose that business card. First thing that I <laughs> when he came to my gym, I said, "Please, you know, don't insult See? us." So he's, 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 you know, he's, he's done a lot. Two things he hasn't done: won an Olympia or an Olympic gold medal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, man, it's just sad that <laughs> this had to, the show had to end this way because literally when I googled, because I was like. How many of you going to tell us 20 years later that he's Miss fucking Olympia? Yeah, if you Olympic know somebody, gold, that he's Olympic if you're friends with somebody medals. that won a gold medal, you, you would know. I would know. Yes, I would know because I watched the fucking Olympics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be an Olympic. And back then when he was 17, supposedly 17, he was probably 27 at that point. You know, I was 22. So I was probably yeah. watching it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But the, the That's crazy. Is, you know, and then you, you just... Because I remember the Listen, 80s, I don't want to. I, I don't want to waste another fucking minute on this. Dude. But, but hold on, yeah, one more minute. Because he said you should have focused on his bodybuilding accomplishments, not about this this thing. So to be fair, he made it to Olympia a few times. He he won the show. Okay, he, and, he, and making it to the, the Olympia open. is way more worth than the fucking. Yeah, I was Mr. at the I was at the Olympia, Olympia seven. Medal. I was at the Olympia seven times. I don't call myself seven time Mr. Olympia, guys. Yeah. Just to be exactly, exactly. <laughs> you so, know, because it's it's disrespectful. On a personal level, and then it's disrespectful for the people who actually won the title. So calling yourself Mr. Olympia not only disrespects the IFBB and all the other competitors, it's a direct disrespect to all the guys that have won the Olympia, just like the people that worked so hard to win an Olympic gold medal. Yeah. Now you're placing yourself in an upper echelon of people that have worked very hard to get there. So you're, you're it, that's even 10 times more disrespectful than the yeah. people that are in that, that position. And then he well, disrespects not... all of us telling us yeah. this bullshit. Like, we dumb idiots that wouldn't even know the difference between New York or New Year. Or he must be real. He must forget that the internet exists. Exactly. I, and the internet was right next to me when I checked I it. I don't understand. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> guys, let's talk about you, brother. Like, <laughs> let's, talk about, let's talk about some real people. You know? Oh, yeah. All right. All right. How you been, man? Uh, what depending you been on who you to? talk to lately. Just w fucking busy, man. I got uh, you know, my podcast with Nick. I started a, a Kratom company um, a with uh, uh, a Kratom. Oh, okay. Called Uprising Extracts. Um, I started that with uh, my business partner, Mark, and we have a, another silent partner um, who eventually will will uh, will come out. We have a little marketing things uh, involved. But uh, that, I launched my online coaching, uh, which actually you were, I, mean, I reached out to you about that a while back when I first started it. And I just been busy, man, traveling. I was over in Italy in uh, in May for, um, I did two seminars over there. A lot of traveling still, still a part of GASP, uh, Better Body still doing. Mm. Uh, I got to go to Dallas for the homecoming party. Uh, for the uh, destination Dallas, um, you guys do a lot of eating over there. Yeah, man. And then I gotta go to I gotta go to Florida for Blackstone because you know PJ still uh, away, hoping to get out in January. But I'm still doing a little bit more than I can. Also, oh, you them still out with Blackstone? You still working for Blackstone? 
Uh, yeah, you know, I, I told PJ when PJ went away, you know, I've known PJ for now 23 years. And I told him, I said, I go, you know, I'll, I'll be here as long as you need me to be here, dude. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I've had opportunities. I've had, I've had companies approach me and offer me three grand more a month than I'm making now. And I just turned them down because I told PJ, I said, I'll give you my word. I'll be here as long as you need me to be here. Yeah. I'm not, I, I don't leave people fucking out with no life rafts. So right. that's not, that's not how's how I he, work. How's he doing? How's he feeling? He's good, man. You know, he's, uh, you know, it's hard working out in there. He, he does cardio twice a day. He works out with what he can. Um, there's not a lot of weights. Um, his job is to like clean the, uh, the common area. Um, he said he's got a very different perspective on life and, and he's excited to get out. And he's like, a lot of things are going to change when I come out. And, uh, you know, it's just, it, it's sad to see, you know, I, I'm not going to get into the, the, to the political side of things, but it's sad to see that he's still in for the same crime and Aaron's out. It just, that's kind of, you know, it bothers him a little, little, you know, when two people do the same thing and one gets out and one's still in. Yeah, it sucks. But, um, you know, he's, uh, you know, he's doing, he's putting his head down and, you know, we, we email back and forth, you know, throughout the week constantly. So he's in good spirits. I'm hopefully going to go visit him, um, after I uh, get back from Florida, but yeah, it's, uh, it, it's rough, man. Cause you know, I, Sean passed away, who was my best friend and, and PJ is one of my best friends. He's in jail. So it's like, you know, it's, it's a lot of craziness at, at once, but you know, you just try to weather the storm as best you can. Yeah. How much longer does he have? So from what I was told, he should be getting out in January, hopefully, oh, okay. if all goes according to plan. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's that's, that's not too bad. He got a few more months. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He'll be for just about two years at that point because he went in, in in February of 2021. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, as long as he gets out, then Blackstone is still there and he still, you know, has something to fall back on. That, that That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I mean, I mean yeah, that, show, that shows who you are, though. As a friend, you, ah. know, you know, you know, holding it down for someone who's in jail, even though somebody offers you more money. So I, I, I really appreciate that, man. That's good. To ah, you know, it's part of that. that that's what friends are supposed to do. Yeah, but you know what? <laughs> you don't. You don't never know who your friends are. Uh, that's until for damn the shit sure. hits the fan, and then you really find yep. out who's your friend. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, 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 unfortunately, I we all probably had to experience friends, so-called yeah. friends. At yeah, one yeah. point. No, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I commend you on that, man, because uh -huh. uh, that's, that's just a testament of who you are as a person, because that's why you're able to to move like you do now. Just cause That's why he's going to make it. Yeah. Simple as that. I always say this. If somebody's a straight shooter and he's real, they're going to make it. They're going to find a way to make it. It doesn't yeah. matter what. You can throw him in the hole. You can throw him anywhere. They're going to find a way to make it. I yeah, appreciate I it. I try, man. I just try, yeah. to do, I just try to do my thing, man. I, I don't try go. to get involved in... In you're, bullshit. You're stay, you're stay in your own lane type of dude is what I, what I take you as. Yeah, unfortunately, people like to swerve into my lane. Fuck him. Especially when he's trying to hack squat. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that? Hey, Milos, did you see that video when he's trying to hack squat? That was squat? awesome. Oh, I love no, that no. shit. Oh, you didn't oh, even God. see the video. He's, I got he's so in the hack squat and somebody... What was it? I somebody love that made? shit. That's the real... There is, there was two guys fucking around, right, dude, right in front of the fucking platform. And I wasn't even a dick. I said, guys, I go, don't do that shit in front of me. Do it to the side. And he like, like it's a public gym. And I go, that's fine. Just do it to the side. Don't do that shit in front of me. And he was getting mouthy. And I fucking, I, I literally stand up. I'm like, hey, you want to fucking go outside with you and your boy? Like, look, 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 I'm not doing this fucking that talking New Jersey shit. boy came right out. And then he kept talking. So I fucking just racked it and jumped off the fucking axe wall. And I was like, I fucking asked you to get out of my fucking way. And it just. Then I was the juice. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm on. It's an Instagram. I gotta see it. Yeah. Oh, no, it's oh. You could you could. If, if, I don't know if DJ it's can share. Be on YouTube somewhere. But if D, if DJ know. goes to YouTube and just types in "Guy Sister Nino," it's one hundred. I, I can't first. from here because I'm I logged in like you guys, so I can't share my screen because uh, I'm in the studio. Oh, so but I I'm, have it on my phone. But don't worry, we see. we will we will Kyle will uh, she I'll, will I'll find it and it, she will yeah. put it up on the podcast for sure. That's a, that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that uh, I actually made a lot of money off that because I have shirts that say "Not in front of me" on it, and then I did like a a, a, a parody with the Nike swoosh with an arrow, and it says "Just do it to the side." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw the video. I was laughing my ass off. I'm all by awesome. myself. I'm looking like yeah, this guy you know, going people, crazy. People think I'm a people think I'm an and people, I'm I literally think I'm one of the most nicest, humble, kind, giving human beings. But when I'm in the gym, I just want to fucking like I'm an, I'm a maniac. Like yeah. just I I want to be left the fucking line. I want to work out. I I my passion was always working out. I don't bodybuilding was just a byproduct of who I was, but I still right still to this day I go in the gym every day and I fucking love to work out. Still to this it's, day. It's, I love it to to this day. I go to the gym every fucking I still have my training split. 
I train my balls off as heavy as I can. Is control. I, I just I enjoy being in the gym. It's yeah. My pat. I love it. I'm at week. I'm at week four. I'm waiting for Chris to come out so we can finally do this workout together. That's We've been right. talking shit for so long now. You want to do? We're gonna. What are we gonna train? We're training shoulders. Legs. Shoulders. Whatever shoulders. You train. Well, not shoulders. Shoulders. Whatever we all you got bad shoulders. I, I let you choose the weapons. Oh shit! Oh my <laughs> legs. Legs. Okay. Legs, baby. I let you. Do we choose. all. So wait, Milos, you got bad shoulders because DJ tore his shoulder wiping his ass. My yeah, shoulder. Yeah, he yeah, took but, the my shoulder but my shoulder is good though. I don't, I don't have bad shoulders. Yeah. You're good. Oh, your good shoulder is good. I, I have to have Dude, surgery. Me, I was me and Chris hey, are bad. Yeah, let me tell you. Bad. No, don't, don't go in a war with the dentist for shoulders. He can lift anything. Man. No, no, the guy. It wasn't the shoulder. I thought it was the shoulder. Bicep. The bicep. Was, here. was the biceps tendon? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, ripped my shoulder out trying. I just want to. Hey, I just want to see Chris puke again. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Puke again, like that was. A <laughs> you guys trained together a lot back in the day, no? No, no, I never trained. No, no, no. no. Well, I, I mean, you guys trained Chris. around the same time. <laughs> I knew you were gonna no. say that. What, no, I, guy, what he said? We, were, we weren't. We were in the same lane. That was all. We went in the same lane. <laughs> Chris looked at me like an enemy. <laughs> oh really? Oh yeah. Call he me had a, a hit out on me. Call me a pinto. To this day, I can't fucking forget. <laughs> 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 He's still mad at me, guy. <laughs> no, I was. I'm not mad. I just, I just can't forget. I said, I said hey, I said this pindo's still rolling, though. <laughs> <laughs> this pindo, when you hear somebody ur, ur, in the back, guy, it's a pinto coming. Guy, guy, you well, know, well, guy. If you came from, a, you came from a neighborhood where if someone <laughs> says something, you're gonna say something back, right? Yeah. It was nothing more than that, dude. It was no. Like, not, but what did yeah, I say though? Wasn't See, personal. What did it's I just, say? He was going no back then he was I'm gonna tell you the story <laughs> more time because guy. What don't did know. I say? What did I say? I'm gonna tell you. Yeah. So we at the Olympia, uh Dennis plays behind me, and then uh See? he plays behind me. But don't he be was like always, Silvio now. Don't be like Silvio now. He was always trying to beat me, <laughs> this guy. From the time he got his his his, his uh thing from Joe Weed, he got his contract from Joe. He fucking had a hit out on me, right? That's not true. That's yeah, not you had a bounty on my head. You had a Chris, bounty. That's not true. I didn't have a hit <laughs> you on you. You said that Joe said that can you beat Chris Corbin? Yeah, but no, I just told you what Joe asked me. I when know. When I went to the office with Joe, and I remember it? Joe, I, 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 was, I was with uh, Peter McGuff. Joe calls me in the office. I go in. He said, take your shirt off. Pose. I took my shirt off. And then he asked me, but no, before he, I took my shirt off, he asked me, can you beat Chris Corbin? I don't know why he bring Chris up. Because he didn't like it. Sounded to me like he wanted company. to exchange Chris with me. I don't know. Yeah. Uh -huh. Anyway, so I said, of course I can. What am I going to say, no? Like, I'm going to make you a, a, a millionaire, Chris. I'm going to make you a millionaire. That's what he told me. Yeah, I and believe I'm, it. Okay, well, believe shit, it. let's do it, right? So, But I've been, been penny pinching me from the time I got my contract with Joe. It was like $2,000. Like, Joe, thank you, but really? No. <laughs> like, it was like $2,500. I'm sure <laughs> by the time I pay my rent, I'm fucked. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I got five bucks at Christmas in my pocket. <laughs> who had the biggest con who had the biggest contract with Weed back at that time? What do you think? Uh, I know I know Gunter, uh, Gunter and, and, and Lou Ferrigno. Gunter got the one I was supposed to get. And that was three hundred some um, three hundred thousand a year for the next three years. Yep. Gunter got the one. But he was always ahead of me when it came to everything. For any any like so he was Gunter, getting a, Gunter got three hundred thousand a year. Yeah, he got the million for three years. Get the fuck out of here! I think Ronnie. I think the Ronnie was that biggest contract with BSN. I think Ronnie got a mill for a year. That was no. I thought it was Phil. Phil with uh, oh, no. Phil Ronnie got, was with BSN. Phil got, Phil got eight hundred. I thought no. I thought it was. I, I mean, I don't know. We we all can speculate now, but I thought it was two million uh, for a year. A million a year for two years. For Ronnie's. No, that's. I'm think. I thought Phil. Oh, I don't know, Phils. And then somehow this didn't work out for the second year for whatever reason. Yeah, huh. I don't know if it's true. I mean, one day we'll have to Phil on to elaborate. Right. But, but yeah, I didn't know. Moves. I didn't know that Gunther had a million dollar contract. Oh yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. It's set up real good. So what do you mean, Chris? And what, what do you mean saying so, this, so, so this listen, was supposed to be mine? Then, listen, <laughs> so before internet, Chris, it was supposed to be yours. Like before, yeah, it was supposed to be. He told me he was going to give me the contract. You know, you know, it was supposed to be mine. The 1977 gold medal at the Olympics. 
Guy. Hey, guys. So, guys, so listen. So, so we had writers from Flex, and they'd walk around and talk to different people after after the show. And maybe he was probably a little salty about his, his place, and he probably looked at me like, look at Chris fucking ain't got no stripes in his glutes and still can beat me, right? So the guy, he guy comes over to me, Dennis says this about you, blah, 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 blah. See, but he this, said, guy, this, this wasn't of, even true. Of Chris nah, this gonna, wasn't even true. Whoever he said, said Chris gonna, he, he told me this, he said, if Cormier's gonna come in looking like that, I'm not gonna even diet next year. That's, I would never say that. He said, you care to elaborate? I would, I would. <laughs> <laughs> See, but that's so not true. That's so not I true. I swear. <laughs> uh, no, I believe Bro, it. I believe I it. Swear, we talked yeah. about it, but I never said that. I said, I'm not so even then, going to diet. So, so one year, and then the next year, he said it was like two years in a row. The, the second year, I just went like, okay. I don't think I talked to that. anybody. I don't think I talked to the anybody guy, what I wanted the, to do other than Milos. Milos knows. Little dark hair guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah let me tell you this. You know, Dennis was staying uh, across the street from my gym, right? And he came in and with his <laughs> fuck up, fucked up face, mad, right? He <laughs> said, Hey, man, do you hear that? Do you see what, what Chris said? He said, This motherfucker called me a pinto. <laughs> <laughs> From that day on, that was for me the start of this whole thing. So, no. <laughs> <laughs> because I didn't start anything. That was the start for me. me the, right, I said, first, no. of, first I told myself, okay, he calls me a pinto. That means he's, what, he's, he's looking out for me. He, he sees me. He <laughs> sees me. Number one. Yeah. Number, two, you're in his rear number view. two, I said, I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. <laughs> 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 well, well, that's hey, it was pretty. It was but funny. It was, because it was, was healthy. Like, it was healthy, though. It was healthy. Yeah. Fucking no, it was, I didn't just say pinto, but I, I like this, this whole analogy. Like, I was like, like first I was like, okay. His, his but what did I, but 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 what did you compare me with? Was it a Mercedes or a Ferrari? What, no, what? no. Let me tell you. Let me tell the story. <laughs> <laughs> I said. I said. I said the reason I beat you, Dennis, is because you're a Ford Pinto and I'm a Ferrari. <laughs> I, said, you, I, said, <laughs> I said you can have the cleanest paint job and the rims all. I don't shiny. remember all that. I don't remember seeing I said that. that. I said well, that. But he didn't write that. It. He didn't write and that. And the rims all shiny, and I and I said I could have a scratch in my shit, but everybody knows I'm still a Ferrari. I think I, I think he, the only thing that I read was that he, uh, he <laughs> comparing me with him was. I don't like comparing, remember what I said. Comparing with comparing me with him because. He's uh, comparing a Ferrari. a Ferrari to a Pinto. That's all I said. <laughs> I was like, Dennis, is that like, is that, is that, hold on, that, that Pinto coming. Because that Ferrari going to run out of brakes one of these days. You got to change out the engine. You're like, it's on. <laughs> <laughs> so then, that's a trigger word. And then, don't, and then the, guy, Dennis is guy, trigger word. Guy. Don't call me small cars, bro. Don't call guy. me. <laughs> Funny thing is, and then literally three months Eddie's later, three, four months later, I beat him. Oh, really? He oh, cheated. Chris was mad. No, he, he cheated. cheated. Oh, he was fucking he mad. Cheated. He cheated. Was that in England or was he that cheated. in Hungary? Ferrari oh, ran out of brakes. Ferrari was that in had Hungary no brakes. Huh? Was that in Hungary? Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit, yeah, so hey, he shit. So it was, listen, so, I think so if, we go to compete in Europe. But to be honest, like, but to be honest, if it wasn't for that two-man call out at the Arnold the week prior, I would have beat you at the Arnold too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Yeah, that was that was. Uh, it's the first uh, time they did it. The, you know, back I, then, I, I guy, you, you, look, you look good. Guy, you, you look know, good. back then, the auto, they used to call always three guys, three guys. three guys. They rotate them around the way they want them, and then send them back. They play chess with them. I and I remember, I never forget. I yeah. never forget. Dennis, I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna beat you in the most musket, but I, let's forget about that one. I'm, listen, I'm, I, had, let, I had some other shots on you that we, you wasn't gonna beat me in. That's I, why I'm not. I never once said. <laughs> I never once, and I want to make this really, really clear. I never <laughs> once said I was a better bodybuilder than you. Never. No, I'm just saying I wasn't going to beat you. In however, the, however, in <laughs> if your brakes is not good, if your brakes is off and your light's yeah. not working, I'm coming if with I that pinto. The, that if, pinto I the gas, if I let the my, my foot off the gas, <laughs> then he might pass him off. Yeah. In the car. But anyways, to, to, get back, to get back to the 2000, 2001 Arnold, I'm going in. I was, me and Milos, we were confident. Because yeah. that was a fucking good look for me. I was full. So we Dude, get in, you, you know, in the first call out. Ronnie Coleman. 
Chris, come here. And I'm just waiting. I'm waiting. Like, I'm in, like, you know, I'm waiting for the gunshot. <laughs> what they say? And Run out it. on stage. That was it. Oh, really? I was like, I'll be oh, damned. Oh, hold on. Final. <laughs> just wow. Two, two main call out. What, what does that tell the judges? That's yeah. one and two. Yep. So now, after that, that call out, they called me in. So now it's too With late. them. I'm already three. Yeah. That's the best I can yeah, get. Yeah, because now they're putting you, they're putting you, they protected, you're already in handicap when you got they to work Chris. your way up. They protected Chris that day. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> see, Chris? I mean, Chris, had, you Chris, had, had, hey. Chris had that Geico insurance well, listen, policy. Well, listen, he, he beat me in hungry. I let my foot off the gas. He came around the corner. He, he, he beat me. And then, but then he struck a nerve in me because we walking back on the bay, on the bus and we heading to uh, Australia. And I walked by and I he just got on the phone with, I guess his wife or somebody he was like, Milos, I got it. Milos, I'm, Milos. Oh, it was Milos? <laughs> oh, I thought it was your wife. I thought it was, I got him. No. I got him. I got him. I was like, oh, I'm killing you. I'm killing <laughs> I did that with Jose. I was chasing Jose. I, my whole career, I was chasing Jose. I got Jose once at a show in Arizona. And he 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 knew he texted me too as soon as he because he was he was in the audience watching he got like seven and he was like you finally fucking got me I was like yeah it yeah. sure did bitch. but then again I, I got it then again I admit every time I beat Chris it was because Chris was really way off. People always ask how I got here. I was willing to work just a little harder than everyone else every damn day. If I can have hundreds of hours back, you know I'm gonna grab them. Spending hours prepping chicken, rice, and vegetables, F that. I rely on perfect nutrition. I rely on trifecta. Yeah. Not even close. He was not even close. He was way off. You know what I'm saying? Well, the other time, the other time I'm in England and I'm thinking he's gonna help me get some, some water pills and some uh, color. And I'm in, the, I'm in the lobby, I just got in late. I had some court or some shit to deal with. Come in late. Next thing you know, I say, "Hey, anybody got some water pills or or uh, some color?" Right? So it's like, he's like, "Oh, I'll go check in my room. I think I got some." I say, "Okay." I wait there like two hours in the lobby. Right? <laughs> I'm the last one in the lobby. <laughs> He'll be here. He'll be here any minute. <laughs> Never came. Then he comes down, fucking on the third hour. <laughs> Down, I must have ate food and all this shit up there. Who knows? And then uh, they all come down. You was with a group of people. Were you with Milos? When in England? You come down and it's like, oh, I don't, I can't do it, man. I ain't got enough. Was in England. Yeah. See, I don't I'm know. Like, oh, I don't know. Shit. And so I'm scrambling with some girl trying around. to get some some you diuretics. You brought this up a couple of times, and a couple of times I tell you, I say the same again. I you don't remember? Do I don't do. I didn't. I didn't do that. That's not me. You probably confused me with someone else. I'm almost pos- I'm almost positive at that because I wanted to tell you from the beginning I don't have any. No, I get it, I get it, I get it. I wouldn't but say, I'm oh yeah, saying, let me look because if I, I tell you, you I got them, I'm gonna give, give it to you. Diuretics? What is that? What is that? Like what was that for? Was that Ronnie? Ronnie was protein, protein. You know, I always say the protein. How's retirement for you? Because you retired now, how many years? Uh, 2021. 20, oh, so it's been two years. So it's not really. Yeah. Uh, it's still you're still in that phase where you okay. still don't want to see your muscles disappear. No, no. You know, I no. How old are you? Yeah. 41. 41. You know, it's it, it's. I didn't stop because I wanted to. My my shoulders are so bad. I played mm-hmm. football for 15 years and I got hit every play. I was a running back and a middle linebacker. I got hit everywhere I went. So my shoulders, like I can't. I'm gonna need. I went, I got cortisone shots like six months ago. My doctor goes, next time I cut you open, I'm doing partial replacements. He's like, that's you're, you're that bad. Both of them. I sh- yeah. They're bad. Have you, yeah. have you, this, s- you still I, in pain? Um, like s- sitting, no, but like in the gym, it, it, it's more of a restriction thing. Like I can't really, like I, if I try to raise this arm up, like that's it. Like, I, tell I can't you what, go. I tell you what to do. See that? I'll I can't t- go past there. I'll tell Where you what to do. I'm stuck. Guy, stem cells. I, well, so I did. The ones where they take it from your iliac crest, and that didn't do a. F- I got them in yeah, both shoulders, you both you elbows. Yeah, and it you don't want nothing. the old stem cells. You want that that young stuff. And biblical. Yes. You got it done. Yes. Really? Where? In Dubai. In Colombia. In Colombia. What it was like twenty thirty. What twenty thirty? Grand. Thousand. 
Uh, no, it was actually free. <laughs> well, here, you send me the contact info. <laughs> How's that? I'll go to Columbia for some free stem cells. Yeah, no, it was free. It was because like, I know it, the motherfuckers a, aren't cheap. They gave me an influencer discount, and you know they filmed it, you know, and they use this. And you post promotion. it on, on Instagram yeah, yeah. and all that they, shit. They, they yeah, they do. They do videos. Hey, get in line, and, guy. Huh? Get in line. Chris is next, and then like, hopefully I'm, Chris, I'm up. Let's just Chris. let's just go. A little I tried, stuff. but they rejected oh. me. Because when really? I tried, when I tried to sign up again, it said it's no longer here. And then I <laughs> I emailed them, but then they didn't. No longer didn't here. <laughs> oh man! No longer would you get catfish? Did you listen? Did you uh, did you contact them? I did. What? Who did you contact? Who, whoever sent me that email. DJ, send it to me. Fuck, don't worry about Chris. Let Chris figure it out. Oh, you worry about Chris. Actually, you know what? Chris you know what? A... You know what? I'm, I'm, I'll have a meeting. In... It's going to be fucked up pretty soon. Hold on. I I'll go a... with Chris. I have a meeting in an hour and 20 minutes with the owner of uh, uh, yeah. of, of the guy that works for Bio Accelerator and Jake. So yeah, maybe, yeah, I, maybe email, I can right? throw. I maybe I DJ, can my shoulders are so bad, bro. I wanna, if I showed you, I'm, if I'm I, if I'm I, working on Milos. I'm working on Milos now, so he can go. And then, you know, you can, you know, if they. Milos, your shoulders are bad too? Hey, it's not just shoulders. Joint that Listen, is bad. Guy, no, you know, it's not it only for pain. It's hmm? I, I do the, I did 165, 150 million IV. How did you feel? I, I feel I feel already so much better. I'm back in the. Are gym. you serious? I put on 15 pounds just training again, and I feel like I want to train. And I just had a, a a call with them again, like a follow up three weeks after, and I told them I said I feel so much better, and they said, listen. It's really going to kick in after six months. So six months, if you yeah. feel good now, can you imagine how much better you're going to get? I wow. said, no. Oh, so how do you, how is your how is your it's, it's all like your Donkey Kong. body energy joints sleep crazy ha- crazy? I don't know if I'm telling myself. Have you gotten your blood work done since then? Just, Has your blood just, changed went, at all? I just got my blood work done yesterday, but that's just routine blood work, anyways. But I don't I don't expect anything to show because yeah. you know I'm, we talked to Ford. Ford did it four months ago. And he said his uh, EGFR went 15 up. Yeah. So it's helping him. Yeah. But I'm doing this not, I'm just doing this not because it's free, but because I know I have this autoimmune disease where my body creates infl- high inflammation levels. And that's yep. perfect for, for stuff like this. And I feel yeah. so much better. I have this issue with my eye for two years. I swear to God, I have clouds in my eyes for two years. To really? the point where you get used to it in this one eye, you know? Ugh. And I just realized... Take that off, fucking almost have and not nothing left. So for me, the, the my, my main thing, even even on top of my shoulders, my major issue is I have a I have a high calcium score. I've had it since I got I got tested when Dallas passed away. My best friend got his calcium score tested. And he was at like three ninety four. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I got he begged me to get mine done. I'm like, dude, I don't need. It. I got a ultrasound of my heart. I got an EKG. I got an echocardiogram. Like I'm good. She's like, just please go get your calcium score tested because he was like a, a neurotic once Dallas passed away. So I went and got my calcium score done. My calcium score was 495. Mm. Um, and uh, they put me on 10 megs of Crestor, 10 megs of Zetia. And as the, my buddy got put on, you know, whatever statins he got put on. And what I didn't know, <clears throat> which a lot of people don't, is that when you get put on a statin, because you have your, your the soft cholesterol, the soft calcium is the one that can break off and, and cause an embolism and or, or, you know, cause you to die, right? So- the soft plaque is not really what you you're uh, what you're worried about, not the hard plaque. But when you start taking a statin, the statin hardens all the soft plaque, so your number went up. So two years later, my number went from three uh, four ninety five or four ninety four to six ninety four. My buddy lost fifty pounds, runs marathons every fucking day, is keto, eats all organic. His went from three ninety four to over twelve hundred. So, I went to a doctor. I went to another, I went to a, um, a, to get a second opinion and I asked them both. I'm like, is this, do you think this is from anything bodybuilding related like gear? And he goes, it, no, he goes, I, I, it's genetic. He goes, from what I've seen, he goes, it's mainly, he goes, somebody in your family has to have a high calcium score. Mm. So my mother got done. She's got zero. My dad got done. My dad is a high calcium score. Mm. So there it is. Um, so the scary thing for me is I've heard, well, the scary thing is that We've seen what's going on. How many pulmonary embolisms and brain aneurysms have we seen and strokes? I haven't seen. I think the only person I ever heard of having a stroke or an embolism was Steve Stone. You know, remember he passed away at a show years ago. That was really the only guy I ever knew. Wasn't that the Olympia? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That was the only guy I ever knew to ever have a stroke. God rest his soul. Steve was a phenomenal human being. Hmm. Um, Now, between Sean, between, I mean, the list goes on on George, George Peterson, uh, John met. I mean, I could just sit here. uh, Cedric did Nate. So for me, uh, that's, that's nerve wracking for me. So 
the stem cells I've heard yep. are, can actually reverse the calcium score. So that my, it, uh, above my shoulders, I'm worried about my heart because I do cardio every fucking day. I want, I'm very healthy with what I eat, I, but it's just that calcium score. Like that you can't get rid of it really, did but somebody do, said Repatha works. A, did you do a CT scan? I did a, a CT angiogram. Yeah. So the, mm -hmm. where they can see if any of your veins or arteries are blocked? Uh, nope, zero. Yeah, so, well, that's a yeah, good zero. thing. Zero. That's a good thing. Yeah. I think CT scan is better than a calcium I mean, scan. my blood pressure is 110 over 64. My heart rate resting is 55 to 58. Like, I'm yeah. in impeccable shape. Yeah. But my heart is just, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, the scary part because so many people get them stem cells, yeah. bro. Get them stem cells. Let me know. I be, I mean, I got them done once with the, the, here in in the states, but it, and I paid for it, but it did nothing. Yeah. So I was that's, like, this yeah, because you can't even get enough. You'll probably give you, yeah. I don't know, give you a million old stem cells if they take them from yourself. You know, you want them young yeah. ones. Yeah. Young, ninety six hours old. Let mm. me know, dude. I'm interested. I woke so up the next got... day. I felt I felt better. I don't know. I said maybe I'm just telling myself to feel good. But you woke man. up the next day, you won the gold medal in fucking Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my dad had the four strokes back to back and died. You know. Oh and, wow. Yeah. That, Damn. That's, that's that. Yeah, that's scary. When you when it's that close to home. Mm. That's yeah. scary. Sucks. Yeah, but let's talk about something a little bit more positive. Hey, Roman Fritz won his first yep. Olympic qualification with two fake hips. With yes, was it two? Was it one or two? Two. Are you serious? Both. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's got two hips. Yes. I, I did a pot. We, we did mutant in the mouth last night, and I'm I said, allowed. "That's one of the most impressive <laughs> things I've ever seen." Because I don't know of any other bodybuilder, any that has won a pro show with fake joints. I don't know any. He, he has, won it with yeah. two fake hips. Not two fucking fake ago. hips. What is it? Two years? Maybe. Yeah. Not yeah. even. Maybe not even two years, Milos. Incredible. I had no idea he had yep. perfect legs. Crazy. Yeah. Jesus yep. Christ, and, mm -hmm. and also, but I got to say, I mean, the lineup was was, was uh, I think it was it was not a not a big lineup, no. but yeah, it was the it was the fight was between him and Amy, also from Germany. Amy yep. looked yep. fucking crazy conditioned too. He did. I mean, it was really close. I think. Oh yeah, yeah, really good. Amy was in better condition than Roman, but Roman had the better shape. Better shape, yeah. The better muscle, more. He was bigger, had fuller legs. You know, Amy needs to bring, but Amy is super super young. How old is Amy, Milos? You should know. I think 23, yeah. Yeah, he's super young. The guy, the guy, so young. Like the guy that got second, he's super, yeah. super young. Give him a couple of more years and yeah. bring up the yeah. legs a little bit more and the condition that he brings is fucking ridiculous. R Roman has ridiculous, two, yeah. two, right? Ridiculous. He, he actually, yeah, I agree with you. He uh, out-conditioned Roman, which is kind of... Uh, you know, yeah, uh, which is not an easy the, task. See, yeah. I don't. And so either either the pictures looked like shit because if you look at Roman's pictures leading up, or, or he did something because Roman's update pictures, like right before the show, uh, he was like Munzer peeled. I don't know yeah, if you saw always, it. but he. So he, I don't uh, know if it was stage shots or he did something because his conditioning is never really. Oh, okay. Have you guys, seen guys, Have guys. you seen okay. videos or pictures from stage? Yeah, and and you're right. The you, the other guy looked more conditioned in those pictures. I agree with you, yeah. which yeah, is guys, shocking guys. to me. No, okay. but the other guy uh, is like Roman. He's really, really known for his crazy yeah. condition. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's peeled. And, and he nailed but, it this time. He nailed it. Oh, he did. It. Yeah. Uh, let, let, let's define this. When you say about Roman uh, close to the Munzer, Munzer had a striation on top of striation. No, I was just talking about the glutes at that point. I wasn't talking about his whole uh, body. So, uh. yeah, <laughs> so don't focus on the glutes. You know, let, let's look at the back. Was it the lat striations? Was it shoulder striations? Chest striations? You can't compare. I mean, when you when you uh, call Munzer conditioning, I mean, hold 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 off. Literally. Well, he was. I mean, if you if you pull up Roman's back, I mean, from the waist down, I would I would I would definitely qualify that as pretty uh, fucking close. I, I looked at him actually. I, I sent him uh, some uh, some uh, uh, posing uh, advices because I, I took his video that he posted on Instagram. His back I, double bicep, yeah, side chest, side uh, triceps. Yeah. Also, he needs to work on them poses. Yeah, I mean, he needs Chris. But I told him he needed to do up with a lot of people, though. Yeah, hmm? yeah, true. a lot of people mess that side chest up real good. Yeah, but, but again, you have to play to your strengths. I mean, uh, if you are uh, not thick, you have to cheat and and create the angle, right? And that that's what he was missing, and then. 
all of his judges were telling me are too small, too small. He too may, small. Well, he, cr he cr like crunches in his shots. He makes yeah. himself crunches. Yeah. So you have to open up, stick the chest up, and then turn the shoulders. And, yeah. and I think he pulled it off when, when I, even side triceps look much better with the, you know, bringing the shoulder into the picture, but he crunched down too much. Yeah. Too much, you know, yeah. Sort of what I think he does, Milos, I, I think he knows his weakness is his arms. So I think he overcompensates <laughs> to make his arms look a little bigger in those shots and it throws off the whole pose. Yeah, yeah. It's not the arm, it's not the arm pose. That's the No, no, I, I'm agreeing with you. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. agreeing with you. But you're never gonna you're never gonna hide something, especially something like that. Like you just, just no. pose the best you can. Who knows that better than me? It, it is what it is. Thirteen inch pythons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but not. But they didn't look like that. Yeah. The only shot you can't hide your biceps in because my mine sucked too. Is a front double. That's the only one you can't. Yeah. You too. I said your front Order, double sucks. Double. True. Yeah. True. But li listen, Roman. I think it's it's good to see that there's another guy from Germany representing Germany at the Olympia, which was. You know, we were thinking, like, is this ever going to happen again? Is there anybody? You know, yeah. first we thought there was um, Tim Budesheim, and and then, but now with Roman, and I think Emir will be uh, another guy that will, will be going to the Olympia yeah. in the future. I really believe that he has are, what it takes. He just needs to bring his legs up. And I'm just talking the, about the front, you? from the front, not from the side, from the front. Oh, from know, the side is ridiculous. It. He knows it, and I told him at one point, I said, listen. From the side is like You got to like stop this. taking these pictures where you have your pants right above your knee because this is where you hide that spot that makes your legs look really small and then they i mean small because if yeah. you put the pants up right above your knee you can just make it look like they're even bigger so yep. and i told him that and he's still doing it that means he's still not there yet he's he knows it he's but I, I guarantee you i guarantee you that next year or in two years at the latest this guy will be somebody we all go and talk about yeah hey are you, are you the at, best? That, at that age to have that quality yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. ridiculous. Yeah. It's ridiculous. You, you know who else? The the guy that plays third, 21 years old. Yeah, I heard he was 21, the guy that plays That's third. That's crazy. Okay, Manuel Mun uh, Munoz, whatever. Yeah. 21 years old. He and, was, and he that's was good. He was good. He was really, really good, too. Yeah. Yeah. And then the fourth guy is also a Spanish guy. I, I don't know. Pablo, I don't know how you you, you say his name, that double L. Uh it's not uh, like a yeah. But how many people on, on the whole? Yeah, line I, I have a similar name, uh, your piece. Yeah, your piece. Your piece. But how many yeah. people in the whole lineup did anybody yeah. know? Not a lot. Not much. Roman. And, and this uh, is what I'm what talking about. This is what I'm talking about. This is a pro show. This is an Olympia yeah. qualifier. Hey, I but knew, it's I happening two a lot. people. Two. Hey, how about how about uh, coming up in uh, in uh, Florida? Yeah, it's six, seven people. Pro. Seven people for the Tampa Pro. For the Open, yeah. you can, and it you makes know, no sense because they give out me. they give out it's more pro cards seven. now. Six or seven. How do they give out more pro cards now than ever? You got six guys showing up at a show. Are you telling me the Tampa Pro has six athletes signed up right now? Yeah, and we are like what, and the two twelve has now? crazy amount, right? The two twelve and Classic have a a, a big that amount. It's fucking sad, the man. Open. This is Jump sad. The Open is uh. Jump into that one. Who's in it? Who's in it? You're. Uh, Hunter, and he's Thomas. gonna get a he's get a win, and Joe Thomas, and that's the only one that I really know. Is in, uh, is, isn't um, Andrew Jacked? He's no, doing Texas. A Texas, yes, you're right. So he's going. But, uh, he's 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 taking one shot. And Carlos, if I was Carlos Jr., I would get in that one too. Yeah. Tell me about it. If I was Carlos Jr., I'd get in that one just to roll the dice and see what's happening. You can get a good. Uh, I don't think he's gonna roll. I don't think he's gonna roll dice with a pro debut though. Yeah. yeah, but you got it. But it's not about. I, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just saying I don't think somebody's going to roll a dice. But well, listen, it's not about out. percentage of winning. When I went to the Ironman, I was doing it the soon as the soon as I can get it to the pro show. I'm going to see where I land. You know, I yeah. took second to your uh, to Vince Taylor. Then I took fourth at the Arnold. But then I took sixth at the Olympia. So that's my all my first year. But it wasn't like I'm trying to see the winning percentages. Yeah. Of, I don't want to lose. I don't want to. I'm scared to yeah. lose. Yeah. I think it's, it's all about learning. Sure, guys, but Chris, a lot of people. learning right now. Yeah, but back then, people yeah. didn't get cri criticized in the moment. So not taking first and getting the well, I've, instant. I've been instant, around. I've been around. Know? I've been around Flex and I've been around Rico and they fucking criticize the shit out of you. <laughs> fucking right. Dude, Flex, Rico will make your ass feel so bad. <laughs> I remember, I remember I was hitting a back shot. He said, like, yeah, you look good, homie, but you ain't got no back. <laughs> you, you're back. You got the lines, but you ain't got no thickness. I was like, 
Damn. Nick like, Walker said that about Samson. He got fucking crucified. On yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He wishes. He wishes uh, Samson doesn't have a back. <laughs> uh, Samson, Samson has a back. It's just not his best shot. And I don't like everybody got up in arms about it. I'm like, it's not that yeah. big of a deal, everybody. So you have to have a weak shot. Everybody does. I know, but Samson, no, weak perfect. Shot, Samson's is weakest shot is his back to bicep. End of story. It's not no big deal. Yeah, uh, just watch Samson. But it's still crazy. Next uh, few months of the year. <laughs> I mean, he is improving rapidly. Oh, I mean, my God. He looks got, fucking guys, crazy. You, you're doing a podcast with Nick, so you, you're probably yeah. pretty close with Nick. Can Samson beat Nick at the Olympia? Samson can beat Nick, and Nick can beat Samson. Yeah, hundred percent, absolutely. What, they both what? have the the both. Uh, uh, I'm 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 very like people can say, oh, you're biased. I'm when it comes to bodybuilding, I'm very very. Milo saw it. I was cheering for, and we said we talked about it before when they were both on stage. I was cheering for them both because they're fucking both phenomenal physiques, mm -hmm. very different, and being very different, they have the ability to fucking one can top the other based on if one it comes in at 100 and one comes in at 90 this is a 99 this is a one percent game they're playing this, one of them is is a little bit off they're going to top the other one the you crazy know, Nick, thing is like, that they all young and they all they look like they all improve so they're yeah. like they're all going to advance in yeah person at the olympia but then you got the champion at the top so if you think he may be able to slide down and these guys slide up or something because it doesn't look like they gotta they gotta improve these guys. They gotta this, improve this Olympia, you got the top three, which is Hottie, um, Derek. Nick, and Derek, which are three very close but very different physiques. Then you have a guy like Samson who's in a league of his own, who I talked about it last night, who like he just he is he he he, he created a category for himself. Okay. And then you have a guy like Andrew Jack who can come out of nowhere. Hunter is looking the fucking best I've ever seen him. So you, this is going to be a fucking roll dice. But you guys know what's funny, though? Brandon. Do you know, I was about to say, we, we forget a, two, a, a one time Mr. Olympia, Brandon Curry. We Brandon, don't even yeah. talk oh, yeah, about it. Yeah, I didn't even say that. Yeah, that's and, and you got Brandon Curry, who's still fucking at the top of his game. Yeah, I think people, people forget Brandon because he was fourth last year. But I think if Brandon, because he's not making no noise at all. I think Wait, so he can come on that stage. I'm going to ask, so, so my, my buddy, my, my buddy, got here a little bit ago he's he just turned pro last year he's doing his first pro show at, in the open next year but i want to ask him unbiasedly what do you think here i can turn the camera what do you think unbiasedly between the, the samson and nick at their best and it, it, who do you think would win and then on top of that out of all the shots that because the, the samson's back is a big talk would you say that what is samson's weakest pose Pose. And this is this is Bobby Cardellemi. He just turned pro last year. He's doing he's, his first hey, open show hey. next year. What's up, Bobby? What's going, what's going on, hey. guys? What's going on, Chris? I actually met you at the Arnold. I almost ran into you at Ruth Chris. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, okay. okay. <laughs> like, literally. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was coming yeah, in. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And I, I told him that I wanted to tell you that I would have turned pro 10 years ago if I didn't read all the stories about Chris Cormier at the club. <laughs> okay, because I thought I could do that and I couldn't do it. So, <laughs> once I got the wife and kids, then I was able to lock it in. But yeah, uh, so anyway. All right. So okay. who, 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 do you have, who do you have between Nick and between Samson. Samson and Nick? At their best, I think I give Samson the nod. Um, I just I always gravitated towards the taller guys anyway, and he's got the lines and the size and just. From what I heard when you were on the Cutler cast, Milos, that yeah. his pictures at 3.30 were supposedly yeah. nasty, and uh, I didn't get to see him yet, but I'm sure they are, and that's going to be tough to beat because Nick's pretty much maxed out. I mean, he'll find a place to put some muscle, but I don't know. Samson's got a lot of room still. Yeah, but does Nick need to get any bigger? No, but he's going to try, right? Yeah, but Nick. is that going to help him? No, well, I think, well, then I think it'll help Samson, though. Dennis, I, I would say, yeah, Nick needs. He needs maybe, muscle. Maybe only because, maybe because quad sweep, quad sweep, the, that's yes. the thing that he has going for him. He's not going to outshape, you know, uh, uh, be, be more aesthetic nope. and be wider, be tapered, X frame, and everything. There's no way. So he has to play oh, for, no, for no, no. Uh, size. I, I get it, but I get it. But you know what? Oh, you know, too much no, size no. is not going to help, you know? I, I think it's going to make him impressive to have that those bellies full but you know the thing is with um samson when we had that that um that olympia battle all the serratus and the obliques all that stuff is crispy right now and that was at a weight of two uh 325 
that that was pretty damn impressive. Milos, what you 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 coach Samson? What is Samson's weakest pose? Well, weakest pose. Well, I agree that maybe back double biceps comparing right. with the freaks like Nick. No, has no, no. I'm just I'm just standing. No, no. I'm just standing. Yeah. Well, when I say yeah. his weakest shot, that's standing by himself in a room taking yeah. shots. And you have your best pose and your worst pose. His worst pose is what? It, worst pose is, uh, I would say, back double biceps. Not oh. worst pose, but no. the least competitive pose. Okay, so that's... Uh, among the that, top five. At, uh, you know, But it's greatly improving, and don't be <laughs> surprised. No, 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 but, you gotta, but, but pe what people don't understand is when we're talking about what they have, I'm basing it off of what I last saw on at yeah. a show, not what he could be. Cause what he could be is fucking eight time Mr. Olympia for, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. what he was last year from what everybody saw, that was his weakest shot. And I don't like people get so upset about it. And I'm like, guys, if that's okay, it's okay. Yeah. You can have a weaker shot. But, but, uh, right. I like analysts. This is why, I mean, and I hope you don't mind when I jump at you about Andreas Munzer and uh, Roman. No, I, I understand. I understand. Yes. You have to uh, dissect it. Andreas Munzer had a skinless fibers all over the place, was, everywhere. Yes. And Roman doesn't have it. great condition. No, agreed. Not equivalent. So now for, for uh, Samson, and I just posted yesterday, look, Two years ago, uh, he sent me like one of the first ch uh, check-ins. Oh, I started yes. working with him. Yeah, it, it was quite small and narrow. So initially, immediately, said, okay, we need to expand the shoulders, you know, width of the shoulders, which by now, look at him. You well, can, you can never look at his physique now and, and say, oh, he is narrow. His no. shoulders are, are there. And back is expanding. And is getting a quality. He still doesn't have that fibrotic uh, Sean Ray, uh, Flex Wheeler, Ronnie Coleman, Dorian Yates, when they, they do that pose uh, for, for lats and you can see the Christmas the fibers. Tree. Yeah. Yep. So he is not at that level. But uh, when he hits the back down biceps, especially now, he learned how to open up more. He did. And the detail is coming. I mean, sure. uh, 330, we have a 15 weeks and he's improving. As, as you know, we get off completely of yeah. uh, supplements. And now, you know, the things are kicking in. And now the diet is uh, super strict. He is hungry and motivated. And he knows. Listen, listen, you don't have to be a genius to, to say that he is potential to win. So now when you can be, you know, creating the legacy and winning, uh, how hard he's going to train. Uh, expect the best uh, out of Samson. And your question to your friend. I'm sorry, what's your name? I'm Bobby. Bobby, nice to meet you, Bobby. Nice to meet you, too. Yeah, I, I love your opinion. Yes. Okay, guy, guy, can I put you on the spot? So, so, I, and I'm just real quick, Milos, I, we, I did a podcast last night, and this is what I said. I said the one thing I love about Samson is there's not a lot of guys who you can look in their fucking eyes and see the fucking fire burning oh. in their soul. I said, he's like, I, that's how I felt I was. Like people could look at me in the gym and go, that motherfucker is that and he brings that and I fucking love it. I guy, love it. Guy, can I put you on a spot? Absolutely. Nick at a hundred percent, Samson at a hundred percent. Who wins? And the, we're going off of last year, right? No, when I'm I was going there, off a hundred percent. No, no, I, I yeah, what but I, I go off of their last showing, right? When I watched the Arnold, and, and me and Milos had this conversation. I'm Milos, I'm not arguing with you. I agreed that Nick's legs, we actually talked about this last night, were flat, mm -hmm. right? However, I'm a conditioning guy. I go for conditioning, and I like the peeledness. In that show, in my eyes, Nick was in better conditioning. Nick has a ton of muscle, and he doesn't have – people say he's got – I don't think he has an ugly shape. I think his shape was much uglier earlier on in his career. True, and true. the wider he's gotten, the smaller his waist gotten, he's changed aesthetically. Not a lot of people have done that. Right now – if I'm going off of past, I would give it to Nick. But like I said earlier, if if Samson improved and is conditioned, it's gonna be a fucking mm. it's gonna be a hard day. Yeah. No, but I, I think you're right with Nick. Nick looks better now than he did when he turned pro in the, in the first year or the you know first year and a half. Because he and you got Samson who's gonna be coming in greatly improved, and Nick's gonna be Nick mm. is probably gonna be ten pounds heavier, so Nick's gonna be improved too. So. Those guys, I, I and I love it because Derek's going to be improved. These guys are fucking hungry, 
and they're all fucking competitors. And I actually love every one of their physiques. How's that? Yeah. I love them. I think Derek's physique is fucking in a league in its own. I think Hottie's physique is in a league in its own. I said Samson physique in a, is in a league in its own. And so is Andrew Jack. And so is fucking Knicks. When was the last time in the Olympia was that was competitive? Never. It, it, in the 90s when you guys did it. We or early had, 2000s. We always had one guy in the front that was almost unbeatable. Or looked yep. at as unbeatable. But yep. right now, there's literally five, six guys that can walk away with the Olympics. Every name that I just named, and I didn't say Brandon, I didn't say Hunter, all those guys exactly. all have a chance to win that there's fucking stand Five or six guys that could be in that five or six guys. Easy. It's crazy. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, when you guys talk about it, and because Chris is here, and uh, of course, I have to point out 97, do we agree that uh, Nasser could possibly be Dorian? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, at that show, right? Yeah. So the him. very next, uh, and Ronnie was, yeah, Chris, you were eighth, Ronnie was ninth, I was 10th. Right. The very next show in European Grand Prix Tour, Hungary, I beat you, Chris. Okay, in, in Hungary. Point it out, point it out. Two days out. later, you beat, uh, uh, two days later, in England, you beat Nasser or somebody. Okay? And yeah. then, a week later, Ronnie beat Kevin. Kevin was winning all these shows. I, I mean, you know, so we was always beating each other, but today's people would never think we never beat each other. Like, yeah, <laughs> like Ronnie never, Ronnie never lost. lost. No, and fucking yeah, Ronnie, Ronnie lost to Gunther in the GNC show of strength anyway, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was third in that show, but Ron, but I'm just saying, like, today's people they, they think that that never happened. I See, just, and I don't know I why like the guys this. can't, and I don't know why the guys can't be like that. Like, I, I don't know if you guys are all best friends or not, but I look at those tapes back in the day, whether it was a facade that you guys were putting on. I think it was cool that you guys like Dennis. My best memory of you. Traveled together though too. Yeah, well, it, it's we traveled yes, together a lot. Yeah, well, that and that's so. What, what I was going to say is one of my best memories, Dennis. I don't know if you remember this, but we went from uh, Czech Republic and we had to take a private jet to Italy. Yes. And it was all the athletes, and we were all we sleeping in this airport. And, and you filmed us, oh, and it was like me, Rami, <laughs> everybody, um, Sean, Flex. Uh, um, uh, Beto Abispor was on there. God rest his soul. Yeah. I mean, the, and, uh, Dennis Wolf, and you just went and you were just doing this, <laughs> and you and I was like, I, I remember watching the video. I was like, I'm on the plane with like some of the like best fucking bodybuilders in the world, like like because you like there was all like you guys that were like coming down from your career, and then like the new guys oh, were I was coming long, up. I was done already. That was yeah, yeah. but you not you weren't like 20 years. You weren't like 10 years done. Yeah, you, yeah. like just what got done a couple it? years you ago. A year though. 2013. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was. 14. The max. I have the video. I can look. Hold on. Let me look at it. <laughs> send that. If you have that, send that to me. That video is awesome. Yeah. I don't have that. I just remember you posted it. Yeah, I, well, I caught everybody okay. sleeping. You know this picture when? Uh, yeah, Chris Cormier beat me at uh, another champion, <laughs> and, I, and I just put you it there. The week before. <laughs> yeah, but I say I never consider. You know, I'm a loser if I lose to to uh, Chris. I never consider, you know, oh, yeah, it's fucking, <laughs> not me, he's a great bodybuilder. So I, I, oh, you lost. No, I didn't. You know, I just played second to him. He's so phenomenal. You know, Chris, I really, when I think about it, it just bothers me that you never won Olympia too. You had just about everything and all that. It just Opinion, it, it, man. It's a opinionated sport. You can't, like, dunk the ball. And then fucking run down the court, fucking shimmying and stuff. You got to fucking, someone's got to say, yeah, he won. But, you know, it just always, I don't know. It's always, it's, it's always something like that. Right, October 14th. <laughs> I just sent it to you. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, October 14th. It was October 2014. See, you, you can tell this is the old man podcast because I get made fun of that I don't know how to work my screen. You can't even share your fucking screen. And not only that, no. I, was like, these, I was like, these guys are definitely old because nobody does a podcast at 2 in the afternoon on a fucking Tuesday. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> gotta get the early bird special. <laughs> hey, oh, man. Be, uh, I have to use. I have to use. I have to use the studio time whenever I can get it. Uh, well, let me say this, but before, like, because I know we've been talking, I, I just hope you guys know, like, you know, I, I might be forty and retired, but like, I don't think you guys realize the impact that you guys had on on my career, because like, you guys 
whether or not like I, you know, because growing up, I was short. I like the Lee Priest, the the Dexter Jacksons who were a little shorter. But like I have every ba- ba- battle for the Olympia DVD. I have every ma- Chris. I still have the magazine with you and Ronnie in boxing gloves on uh, the yeah. cover. Like you guys, Milos, I, your posing routines and and like just through your transitions and the way you you were on stage. Like I was a fan of each and every. Like you guys all played a ro- like Dennis. I remember seeing a picture of you in Gold's gym in the fucking short, short, thin, thin stringer mm-hmm. with the bandana on the, the fucking side. Like. I, those things are ingrained in me, and those are reasons why I wanted to be a bodybuilder. So you guys are are, are, are a huge reason why I I have these pictures in my room and why I'm in the position. So I like thank you guys for being who you guys are. Truly, you're saying appreciate and you, it's, bro. It's an also like an error that will never happen again, right? Because no. now we have iPhones. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, but like, there's um, no think, like, but like I, it's almost like legendary, right? Because yeah. there's stories. There's but like but I think, but you know what? I think in 10, 20, in ten years or fifteen years. They're gonna say the same about the guys now. I don't think that this is not. It's gonna be much well, less. May, maybe. It's, ah. it, it's, okay. What is it? Uh, let, me, the, uh, uh, let, me, let me change what I just said. Let me let me the say. The thing was different way. within the magazine. Maybe, maybe it's not that, that many people on, in on the whole roster right now that are we gonna talk about in 10, 15, 20 years. But there's gonna be guys like Nick. You're gonna you know you're gonna be talking about these guys for for a long time. Do you, do you want to know when the the I realized that things were different? About five years ago, I was with uh, a company called Centurion Labs, and I went to the Arnold, and I went to go visit Charles at the Optimum booth, okay? And I walked in, and the motherfucker's handing out sample packets to people. And I fucking gra- I gra- I grabbed the bag, I threw it on the fucking ground, I grabbed him, and I go, no fucking chance in hell, you're standing here, who you are handing out fucking sample packets. And I grabbed him and I walked him up to the fucking to, to the optimum guys. And I go, he is not handing out another fucking sample. I go, the fact that you guys allowed him to do that is so goddamn disrespectful. I go, if I see him handing out another sample, I'm gonna fucking lose my shit. That's my job. Like, and it's just because but people were taking samples and they have no fucking clue who that man is. Mm-mm. And it just that pisses me off because you don't know the sport, you don't know history. You're just there for fucking a packet of protein, and you don't know nothing about bodybuilding and why you're here. It's not their fault they didn't know who he was, but it's Optimum's fault for even yeah. Being it that just but it just showed the, the where we are in in, in bodybuilding. Mm. Yeah, it started to shift when when we were getting paid to be at the booth, but then it slowly started to change. There were so many people willing to do that for free, or just to be affiliated, or just wear a shirt, just to get a shirt and some packs, some some nutrition. They were fine at. That was their payment. That was good. And it had so many people want to do that. Then it was no reason to start paying anyone because they always couldn't get someone. Chris, yeah. what change, what change pissed you off the most? Uh I'll tell you what mine was. I think I think just like not knowing the history. No, 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 no. I mean I think, I, I'm I'm talking about from what we used to do. What cha- all of a sudden there was a switch, things changed. And I don't know if you remember all of them, but if I tell you one, you'll remember exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. What change did piss you off the most? Because we lost money. Yeah. Selling pictures. Oh, yeah. All of a oh, sudden, yeah, yeah, the sponsors yeah, put I, the pictures there. And I, you, got, and you I signed them out for free. You signed them for free. And we made good money signing him. We used to make some really good money. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah. You'd be you remember Australia, remember Australia, Australia, they were paying like 15, 20 bucks for eight by tens in Australia. And you run when out. You, you run out. Yes. The next year you yes. go back there, you bring an extra 500. You yeah, know what I'm saying? So because it's, it's you get a couple the, of, same at the FIBO. In your pocket. I remember yep. my first time I went to the FIBO, my first FIBO. And I'm, I've, do, I've been doing FIBO every year since 1993. Wow. Okay. But the first time I went to the FIBO in 93, I was an amateur. I just started competing as an amateur. So I go there. I'm still a bodybuilding fan. Here's the WIDA booth. I mean, the WIDA uh, stage. They had a whole stage. Just this, 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 I mean, just WIDA. Yeah. And these guys would stand on that stage, on, on the side of the stage, and sell autographs. There were people lined up like they're giving free hotcakes. Miles. Yeah. I'm, I swear to God. And then they would go on, and there was a huge clock that they will show you when it's the next show time because they they pose like three, four Uh, times a day. Oh, yeah, that's right, that's right. So they will get on stage, and then after they come down, they will stand right there and sign autographs. 
Like that's crazy. I mean, Dude, the people was amazing, man. Seriously. And, you like, know, and I was like, man, shit, I want to be like this. You know, I want to be standing there, sitting on the side and all. Do you want to know my as, my as far as the eye can see, you would see people uh, watching. Uh, I so my first FIBO I was at, Phil was walking by my booth like a, he was like a few people deep and he screamed to me. He said, "Yo, how's it going?" I'm like. These people are maniacs, bro. I said, yeah, I, I caught people stealing my shit from my booth. Like, they're maniacs out there. Mm. And Phil goes, oh, they stole a couple of your shirts. I feel bad. He goes, somebody just stole the fucking muscle tech cash register and walked away with it. <laughs> Had like 40 grand in it. Oh, oh, stole the whole fucking cash register. The whole oh, thing. And walked away. Shit. Sounds like my friend. <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> hey, Dennis, who was the best? Who was the best German bodybuilder? The best German bodybuilder? Yeah. Dennis Wolf. Dennis Wolf. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I mean I, I'm going off of uh, off of achievements. Yeah. Well, what was this place at the Olympia? The best. This, the best one was third. 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 Okay. But he was top five for years. Why? Who else were you thinking of, Chris? Oh, I was just wondering. Then what Marcus Rule. Marcus. I was wondering what he thought. Yeah, Neither no, Cal. because I'm, I'm, I have to think now because there, how many German bodybuilders are there? I mean, there's Yusuf Bilkos, there's Achim Albrecht, there's uh, um, what's the guy's name that died in the gym, had a heart attack. Yeah, Andreas Munzer, but he is. No, uh, no, no, not, not Andreas. Andreas, yeah, he's from Austria. I'm talking about the German guy. He was at, in Vegas. He worked in a, at the at the gym, and and he and he had a heart attack in the gym a couple of years ago, a few years ago. I remember. The German guy. Man. I don't Come remember. on, you guys know. Come on, you old people. Shit. Achim Albrecht, his time. What's the other German guy? Achim Albrecht. Um, when he gets to me, I'll let you know. So there's yeah. him. Then there's... there's Ro Roland Sherlock, he came after. Roland. Uh, Roland, Roland came after. Roland, 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 then there's no, Günther. And then, right. yeah, I, I have to say who's the best, Dennis Wolf. Yeah, for sure. But no who doubt. died? German guy that died. like the faux hawk, didn't he? No, you're not Andy Hammond. No. No, I'm talking about the German guy, man. What was his he name? Was always he, like, he was a trainer at the... Um, athletic Club? City the, Athletic Club. Oh, Las Vegas Athletic Club. I don't remember. Las Any, Vegas, uh, Las Vegas the gym Club. where Dennis Wolf used to train, and I know that this Look guy had bro? a heart attack. I remember, I remember this guy from Germany. Uh, you guys, go ahead. Let me, let me Google. <laughs> You guys know if hey, I say that. Okay, here, here, here's a fun fact. I'm uh, getting involved in the uh, Anytime Fitness in Las Vegas. You getting involved? Uh, really? Yeah. I'm going to be a percentage owner. It's, uh, it's at 7537 South Rainbow, Las Vegas. So you're going to be so, an owner? Yeah, a percentage owner. And also, uh, oh, I'm no, a couple more. Anytime so do fitness. we need to fact check that too now? <laughs> I'm just no, no, it's true, true story. <laughs> uh, Bill, Bill, Ronaldo, and Heather is uh, is the owners, and I used to have a, a power a Chris Cormier's powerhouse gym back in '95 in Medford, Oregon, and I had it with oh, him. Okay, so so is the gym open? Yeah, it's open already. Oh, okay, so oh, he's just open. coming in. Yeah, coming in. Oh, okay. he he just took it over like a few months ago, and he already gave it a facelift already. But I'm going to run like the personal training stuff and put my little imprint on the gym. And are you going to move out there? Um, I just think I'm going to get a place out there and just go back and forth, and then probably eventually just. Damn, where, where you get all that money from, man? You're going to have two places. What's happening <laughs> here behind my back? What's going gonna... <laughs> This is all because of you, Dennis. There you go, <laughs> Dennis. Well, hey, that's great, Dennis. No, seriously though, Dennis. Dennis helped me get involved in what I'm doing now. Uh, so I, I, I owe a lot to Dennis on that, man. I, I always give him, uh, you know, privately. No, no, you don't owe me anything. You just need to take that I thank you privately back. a lot. I thank you privately, but I but I also just want to make it, make sure it's like, that was a big ass fucking thing, dude. It's like, that shit, like shit. Cause I was pissed when I didn't think I was gonna get to do it. <laughs> and it just like, we gotta keep you going, man. We gotta keep you going, no trip. We're gonna get this shit going for you, brother, so. Yeah, it's, it's, it's that transition once you retire, right? 
Yeah, man. I'm just you know, fucking crazy. You I'm, gotta be this guy's name. Right? I'm thinking too, Dennis. I, I can't remember. You know him. Stuff. You guys know him. But in which show did he compete? I don't know. Yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. I don't, show know, I don't know all that. I, I just know he was fun. a pro. He was a pro. I don't think he ever made it to the Olympia, but he was he was a pro. I'm picking up then. Hmm. And this was in the 90s? Yeah, before. Yeah. When did he die? Yeah. Oh, he died. I don't know. Let it be six, seven, eight, eight years. I, I, you know, I'd like to see. I would like to see Dennis James in a tank top goes Jim Venice in the in the in the good in the the magic mirror over there. <laughs> Why you have to put the tank against, top on? I, because you were the king of the tank top. <laughs> he's coming. He's trying to say something respectful and disrespect me while he's <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, no, on. I want to see you and and who else did I think was Mr. Olympia in the gym? It was uh, Aaron Baker. If you and Aaron Baker trained in the gym, I wonder what the what that shit would look like. Y'all was posing down in that mirror in the gym. That shit would look crazy. Not I'm Josh Wade. Crazy anyway, right? But I'm just saying, like those. We should bring Adam to the to the show. Aaron looked crazy. Yeah, what what is he doing anyways? No, I don't know. He's been alive for a while. Aaron, who? Aaron Baker. 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 Oh, I have no clue. Anybody has any contact info? Mm -hmm. last time the I last heard thing I heard was that he went into a a, a cult or something. Yes, oh. I heard the same. But that was off in that angel. What was that gym called? Angel. Angel Fitness. Is that was that in um, Angel Fitness? He yeah, talking about the strip club. No, no, yes. we're Kelly and Craig. <laughs> Spirited <laughs> Rhino. <laughs> yeah. You talking about Crazy Horse <laughs> Three? <been> <laughs> <laughs> I know nothing of sorts of these type of establishments. <laughs> but, but hey, let's let's ask uh, Bobby. When is your? Oh, he's gonna he's gonna you he's gonna use you like a fucking hooker now yeah, that you said you like Samson. Just no, wait. What is your pro debut? <laughs> what on what? Pro debut. Pro debut. Oh my pro debut. I don't know. I was thinking of doing New York because it's. A are you helping him? No, yeah. but but you see, because we are complaining. How little uh, guys are competing. Yeah. You can throw and then yeah. nobody enters any show. Right. So, uh, I, you know, Chris just oh. said you can pro and went straight into the Iron Man, yeah. right? You know, as soon as they got the pro card, I did every show that was organized. Yeah. I literally did every calendar show in uh, <laughs> 91. Calendar I, year. Yeah, okay. shit. Bobby so, couldn't because of certain yeah, uh, I had legal problems, legal problems but, going on. <laughs> but I do plan on competing. And I could plan on competing next May for sure. But yeah. I think I want to just, I was thinking about what you guys were talking about, uh, why they're not jumping in. But like for me, so I'm 38. Yeah. I have a, I own a gym. I own a couple businesses. I'm competing because I love it, right? Like I'm not doing this to make a living. So you got somebody in their 20s that maybe doesn't have a means of income. Maybe they're not business savvy because this is a time where you have to be business savvy to make money as a bodybuilder, yeah. right? It's not yeah. prize money couple sponsorships are out there but for the most part unless you're crafty and resourceful and know how to make money it's going to be hard to fund yourself to do a show or this i'm this is like me going fishing i'm spending money on a fishing trip i spend money on my bodybuilding show and hopefully i do well and hopefully it rolls into something else and i i make open another business because of it or maybe i just do well at this and that's all that comes out of it but that i don't care uh, when you said you love it. Me. And focus on that, you love it. It's not about money at all. Right. Do you think I competed for prize money? I mean, I competed no. for years. I, made, I hardly made any prize money competing with Chris and, and uh, Ronnie and all these right. guys. So, fifth place, $1,000. Oh, hell right, yeah. Right. But you didn't make money. Right? Right? But, but I was made money. Because I love it and challenge. Right. But you made money. You're on every magazine cover. Like you made money. Well, magazine cover doesn't pay. <laughs> no, but you figured out how to make with, uh, money. People can't figure Hillebrand. out how to make money. Oh, Frank Hillebrand. Frank Hillebrand. Oh, my God, yeah. Oh, that was, oh that's right. right. Hillebrand. Yeah. Frank Hillebrand. Yeah. He was seventh in the that. Olympia before, I remember. Did he make it to the Olympia? Seventh. Frank yeah. Hillebrand? I think he was seventh one year, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's probably. That had to be the only Olympia he ever competed in, I think. But I know he, he, was, oh. he was a trainer in Vegas, yeah. He had a good training uh, business, from what I heard. He was my roommate in, in China when we went for this uh, Chinese trip. And man, I never, <laughs> I never heard anybody snore so loud. I didn't have to change <laughs> the room. Really? <laughs> Shit. Yeah, yeah, Frank Hillebrand. Yeah, Frank Hillebrand. But I, I thought that he died like 10 years ago. 
Well, maybe it's 10 now. Come on, Milos. We, I'm 57 years old. Come on now. It's it's a year or two or three, it's the same for me. He actually looks crazy. Uh, yeah. He looks like, like, like Danny Padilla. He almost looks like a Lee, Lee Labrada. Who? Yeah. In that shot. Oh, oh, yeah, oh they, they just, yeah. yeah. You just mentioned him, Dennis, when you talk about uh, dry oats. You remember? Because the first time, I'm going 92 to uh, China with him. Like and he got the room. And he, he's taking the dry oats, right? And we don't have any microwave or anything. So, like, what are you going to do with this? He just pours the water, he just steers it and, and eat it. Like, what? Yeah, but did, uh, and then it's gonna be weren't you used to that from Serbia or from Yugoslavia back in the days? You didn't even have a oats. Oh, okay. So, you didn't in know. The, in the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have a peanut butter. I didn't know what peanut butter is. I know. No, I, I, I really? only knew. I I, and I only knew peanut butter in Germany because my, we we shopped at the commissary, you know, with the on base. So that's how I know peanut butter. There was no peanut butter in Germany. Yeah, we wow. didn't have it. The, the I usually have the friends from stuff. school. They used to come to my house and I give them peanut butter jelly sandwiches. Because <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have it. There's no that's peanut crazy. butter. They didn't understand because in Germany they put butter on the bread and put yeah. jam on top of it. Yep. Yeah. Same, you know. Same. So, and they came to my house. Or, I don't know if in Germany we have a lard on the bread. Who? Yeah, yeah, the fat lard. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, they put all kind of crazy shit on there. Yeah, but you see, you know, people people don't realize when uh, economy is so bad and you can't feed the family and you need them to have enough calories for a day, you just put most caloric food, and that doesn't matter about nutrition, right? You know, just to have a calories to last you for a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so when is his pro debut? We're New York, work. New, New York, York next year. New York, yeah. I, I'd open, like to do open or two twelve. Open, open, open. Yeah, I'm fine. Did he's he's did almost like two eighty. Well, uh, we, we apologize. I thought you said two twelve. We can't judge you sitting in the corner. <laughs> You know, he's, he's a... Uh, let's see you get a shot, man. Guy's out out yeah. right now. Yeah. Let's see what you're working with. Out angling you. Come on, let's see it. Because ah. guy, guy is out let's angling you. see a shot, right Bob. <laughs> yeah, Bob, take a shot. Show, show, show him your legs. Yes. Show if you want him out... Hey, if I met you in the club, I'll be having you do this right now. So yeah. you got, his legs are huge. <laughs> yeah. Nice, nice tan fucking kneecap. Yeah, yeah you, need, you, need a, you need a little color up in the quad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Glue, glue your stomach to the spine. We are, we are watching through the T-shirt. To the back. So, yeah. so. <laughs> you make fun of me for that all the time. Yeah. So, so, so listen, so, so again, the question that I, had, that I had for you guys two weeks ago. Are we in danger, man, with open bodybuilding? Because it, it looks like it's not getting better. I mean, six we, guys. We at, six guys in Tampa. That's ridiculous. So we're gonna all be at my show next year. We have enough. <laughs> they, they have more. They have. More, I guarantee you, they're gonna have more Dennis. competitors Dennis. in the female bodybuilding category. The, ridic the ridiculous thing is, it's been show after show. It's not like one show. Okay, it's been bad, but I, it's been. I know, but what is it? What is Canada. it? Do you think it's because these guys that don't think they're ready? Is it because they're well? Let me money? ask you this: Do you think? Do you think people are getting scared? I think they're scared. I think you just pressured. You trying to? You want to win every show you in? No, no, I'm not even talking about that. I'm are not you even talking I'm about health-wise. I'm, I'm because oh, the, I don't know. I, uh, so many people are like. The more people that I I have friends that have told me I'm not I, I don't want to compete and I don't. I take, understand, I like, I'm but if I don't want to compete, I wouldn't take drugs because I would be more scared of using the drugs. I agree with 100. So what if I don't want to compete, it's but I'm fucking thick. 320 pounds running around in the gym acting a fool? You yeah. know, I'm not helping myself. What is that for? So, you got to remember, a lot of people think like, oh, if I'm running drugs, but I don't have to do the diuretics or the diet that's healthier. If I oh, take just tests, yeah. it's hey. like the, the, the mentality of how these guys think sometimes, Dennis, are fucking crazy, yeah. bro. Uh, guy, guy, there is uh, hundreds of people in the audience on more juice than the <laughs> stage. Probably, probably thousands of, of more. Yeah, yeah. guarantee. Yeah. And, that, and I don't see that slowing down at all. So, but, no. so, but, but, but listen, but okay. you know what we so, can expect when this happens? What you can expect is that people stop putting the, putting the show on. Yeah. Well, and I then think the competitors complain. Because uh, now listen, I'm saving if if I go shows. with the minimum amount, I'm saving thirty yeah, thousand. Yeah. If I if I minimum, say I'm saving thirty thousand if I don't put the event on. Minimum yeah. fifteen people to compete. Yeah. To to organize the show. Yeah, but if you, if you look 15. back and you don't even have to go back far, 
There was 20, 30 people in the show. 40. Like the Isn't Tampa Pro. Thing? The Tampa Pro is a show. It's, it's today, uh, in the last couple of years, is what the, the New York, I mean, the United Champions used to be. I did Tampa. Tw- uh, the other, it was like 22 guys in my class. Yeah. 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 But. But last year, how many people did the Olympia in open bodybuilding? Yeah, yeah, too many. Thirty. What was it? Thirty-five 30. or something? That's because they oh, had like, they had the more calendar shows that they can. But can and also because we, you know we still yeah, have the point system and all that. But, but that's but, three people, right? Like for the points. Yeah, just only three. three. Yeah, but yeah, I just yeah, don't understand but, why. Yeah, but the thing is, though, uh, Dennis, is there's a certain amount of time that you can even be good. You yeah. could be at your peak, I get but you can't be good hey. at a certain amount of time. Once that time is done, like the time is just done. And there's yeah. people just letting these shows go by like like they got all all their lifetime to do it. And they yeah. don't. Yeah. Yep. Dennis, how many shows did you do? 39. 50 something, right? 39 pro shows. 39 only. Okay. You know, Chris and I, I did know, both 72. But listen, a guy back in the day in the nineties. Seventy four. I mean, how I can think, you qualify? I think it's thirty nine. Don't fact check me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was more. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but, if you lie, but if you want to lie, that's how you lie. You say 39 instead of 35. You did 39 shows and had 39 first place. <laughs> hey, listen, this is how it was. How many there second was, place? How many second Iron place? Man. I think I got... Show of the year was Iron Man, right? Shit, I don't remember. But I think yeah. it was a lot. Every year, first show... The year Not as many as you, though. 22. <laughs> 72. Yeah, I'll get yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, me and Chris did 72. No one's going to... No one's gonna beat my 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 Arnold Classic record. Nah, no, no, ain't no, that no ain't never gonna get beat. Me. Untouchable. Yeah. Hey, I I did the eleven night of the second six years in a row, guy. Hey, That's crazy. I That's have a record of the night of the champions. <laughs> like, say times. what, Milos? We, we could. You were. I did eleven times night of the champions. Eleven. Yeah. Holy yeah. shit. NOC uh, was Where doing that, that one, huh? But 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 listen. So I don't remember his first show. Good luck is going to be Vince Taylor for sure. It's going to be Chris. It's going to be Flex. It's going to be Aaron Baker. It's going to be Paul Dillette. You know, so you already know it's a stacked show. Arnold Classic was stacked every year. Like back in the 90s, oh my God, it was a miniature Olympia. And then you go to uh, Niagara Falls, the Night of the Champions. And that's where usually newcomers, you know, they, they want to prove themselves. And, and that was 30, 40 people. And right? New York, the New, Night of the Champions is the same. It was 50, 55. Yeah, yeah 55 yeah. ones. Sure, what? And then Olympia and then European Tour. And European Tour, I, I went to, you know, pretty much everyone. It's always Kevin. It's always Ronnie. Same it's top guys. Chris. <laughs> you know, so good luck placing anywhere, right? <laughs> hey, but you know, what? The, the one of the best shows in the world was that New York, the New York crowd and the New York awesome. fans. Yeah, man, I, I was man, I was something, bro. Because you know, you don't get to you don't you don't get to compete. You don't get to compete. At least for me, like, there is very few times where like my, all all my friends and family can go to like congregate to one place. So for me, like, that was the only time like everybody that I knew could be in one place at the same time. Yeah, and and so for, that's why I thought it was awesome. And for new pros, it was always. I mean, eighty percent of the new pros they said not New York Pro, United Champions should be the first show. Yeah. And now, I mean, I was at the New York Pro. Yeah. It was it was it was sad to yeah. see that this is going from where it was. It was tradition that it was at least, I mean, even in the last five, if you know, four or five years, 20, 30, 35 competitors. Do you think it affected the fact that oh well, no, because the New York Pro where was it? It I'm, was in I, um, listen, was guy, I can't Tampa. figure yeah, out was it, I can't do you figure think, out what the do you problem think is. maybe do you think it may be because it's New York Pro and it's in Tampa? Because it, when it was always in New York, it was always fucking sold out, dude. I know, but it was. It, it's, it's, I'm not talking about. For it, COVID, it was, wasn't it? I'm not saying it wasn't sold out, but when I, mean, I look at the, the number. No, of I'm talking about the, like the competitors. Like the guys like, in the states. Yeah. No, no, but I'm saying that what I'm saying, like the sold out, meaning like the, the, we had really good guys and people came to see those. Like right. the New York Pro always had big names in it, man. Yeah. When it when it was in when it was in New Jersey, New York, yeah. always. Yeah. Uh, but listen, you know? also back in the day. Promoters would pay for about ten guys yes. to come and compete. Yes. You know, so you, hotel and and I think that has a lot to do with the situation yeah. now. No. Dude, listen, I don't think so I, because I, I don't think the night of champions. You know, you yeah. still had fifty-five people, fifty people, and 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 if only ten get paid or or, or get get their expenses covered, yeah. you still have forty people flying from all all, all over the world to, to the compete Arnold, in New York. The Arnold wasn't good until. But Arnold wasn't going to be a good show until they upped the prize money. Either. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, I, I mean, that's that that, that's what I'm trying to say. I've been looking at this the last two, three years, where you can see the numbers dropping in shows. And I'm not even going about prize money because 
I'm okay, going, so let me. Do you I'm think maybe a, I'm going to a pro show to qualify for the Olympia? That's yeah. my goal. Do you think maybe it's it's due to the simple fact that people like turning pro and being bodybuilders and realizing that there's more money to be made on the latter side, not on the stage, and they're, they're uh, like, I don't have to compete to make money. I don't know, but all, what I do and, know is that but, there's too many pros yeah. out there to begin with. Too many. Title, yeah, but, you, but, but hold on, you see, that, that this that's the problem. What you just said, there's too many pros out there to begin with, and then you have shows that are being put on with nobody at. I know, because the so that's people, the problem. I tell hey, you why. Because, I would take no, the no, pro hold on, Milos, hold on, if Milos, you don't one, one, second, year. one second. I tell you what the problem is. Down, right? The problem they is, do that. the problem is, and this is my opinion, okay? The problem is, too many people turn pro that shouldn't even fucking be pro. Number one, there's too many opportunities to turn pro even though you don't deserve it. Mm. And then those people, they know that, hey, I'm pro, but I know I can't compete with those guys. So don't like count second me place on at national, like, like the second places at nationals? But exactly. do you think that's a sign or, of the time? Or, or turning pro at the Masters with 30, 36 years old. You know what That'd I'm saying? True. Today, those are for me, not pros. For me, pro, when you turn, all they do is they, they win their pro card, they run back to the hotel, change their fucking status to IFBB pro John Quick. Doe. First Quick. thing they do, never been on a pro stage. For me, you're Quick. not a pro until you compete as a pro anyways. Order their Cardillo belt that says IFBB pro on it. I'm telling you, I'm so sick and tired of looking yeah. at that shit, man. But you know, I was at the know, USA. Where, since when do you have to put IFBB pro on a belt or on your shirt? I mean, where's the days where the whole world would know who turns pro? Yeah. My name still says Guy Sister Nino on my fucking Instagram. Exactly. That's a real deal well, why, would you, why would you put IFB Pro like you need people to? Because most of these people nowadays, they don't look like average people in the gym. And if you don't see that they have a belt on that says IFB Pro, you would never guess. But then a lot of these amateurs got a nickname already that they're going with. Before they even get I don't the even program. care about the nickname. You can have this since birth. I don't care. Yeah, but still, though, what's your nickname, though? Yeah. Hey, but, but what, but what do you think nickname. of this? What, what, what do you think of this? If you don't compete for a year, you know, you should lose the pro card. Yeah. Yes, but I would say two years because sometimes people, like, oh, if you're a smaller guy, if you're a smaller guy, I didn't have a lot of muscle. Some of us little dudes need a little more time to put on some muscle. So just, two yeah, years. Yeah, I, you you I want the pro card yeah. in a small division anyway. Listen, I just yeah, so saw. What, what happens if I wanted to gain my? I gain, I turned pro at one seventy six. You think I can be two hundred and hey. two pounds in a year? Yeah, one seventy six uh, is Mister Olympia two twelve. It's called. Uh, he's called the Sean Clarita. Hey, let me tell you this. This is show in Italy. Yeah, but one seventy six on me was didn't guys, look like it was skinny. Guys, check this out. This is show in Italy, November eighteenth and nineteenth. It's called the European Masters. They give out forty two pro cards. What? what? Yeah, but that's all the divisions: bikini, wellness. Who cares? Men's physique. Who cares? But his point is: his point is, out of forty-two pro cards, forty-two of those people will will, 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 will yeah. never win a show, will never go to the Olympia, and maybe pro. there's like three people that might end up qualifying on on some way, shape, or form. Right. In men's right. bodybuilding, six pro cards. Okay, so now there's six guys turning pro, mm -hmm. and yeah, five of them others. probably. Well, yeah, uh, how about this? I can't when say you, it otherwise. You, I, I sound like a when you win leader. the show, when you win the show, then you you would have to be considered. But IBB committee, if they're gonna let you in a, a pro league, but they did that back back yeah. when. Uh, yeah, uh, not a scrutiny. Milos, when I turned pro, mm -hmm. and you turned pro, yeah, I had to request my pro card. I had to send Jim Mannion a a email letter requesting. To get my pro card, even though I won it, that was what we had to do back then. You won the pro card. I went yeah. back. I said, you know, I won so and so show. I'm requesting uh, receipt of my IVB pro card. Like that's what we. That's what I did. Yeah. And they they was they, they didn't Good, yeah. Fantastic. They'd lose a lot of money though if they stopped giving out all those pro cards. You're gonna lose the league. But he's saying oh, they're, 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 they're gonna kill the sport. Because, listen, the sport because is so, the sport is so able, watered. The sport will be stronger. It's like, the lineup will be stronger in the, in the amateurs. That's it. It's so watered right. down that when you go, it's, I feel bad looking at a pro show and not knowing who's on stage. No, but they, I mean, when you're going to like the universe in Jersey and they're giving out, I don't know, they probably give out 60 pro cards. Yeah. And there's 2,000 competitors 
And then out of those 60 pro cards, they're buying their IFBB pro cards, whether they can use them or not, just because they want them. Yeah, and yeah, then but, their entry okay. fees and then their crossover fee. I mean, it's a lot of money. Yeah. I'm not, listen, listen, I'm not trying to say it's bad to different. give out this pro cards because this is up to, you You're know, saying can business wise, money. good, competitive wise, bad. Right. Yeah, they, the can, solution, they can give right? out as many pro cards that they like, which is fine. But right. I would say make them compete. And Milos, yeah. this is a good idea. Make them compete. If you don't compete as a pro, you know, there's people, they will never compete, but they still buy their pro cards so they can say, I'm yeah. IFBB pro. Yeah. Yeah. Make them compete. Oh, because at the end they of the do day, that. Probably- they, you know they do that, DJ, in the natural, in Milos, in the natural organizations. In those uh, natural organizations, because I know because I have friends I compete in natural organizations. If you don't compete in a year, you go back and have to record. You got to get your pro card again if you don't compete in a year. They, yeah, they, they do, do that in the natural leagues. Right. They should do it. No, but they do it with the amateurs too. If you qualify for the nationals and you don't compete within a year or yes, two, yes, you yes. gotta requalify. They should do the yes. same with the pros. After if you don't years, compete right? unless unless there you, go. you have an answer or you have an excuse, like you're injured or whatever. But if you don't yeah, compete, yeah, yeah. you're gonna have to re fucking win your pro card. Yeah. That so was, you that have would, to that take would... that belt off <laughs> and compete again. Hang it up. <laughs> Hang it up for a year. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I like the idea when one person go pro out of the show. Yes. I think that I don't think second place deserves to win. I'm sorry, that's just. But me. it's not it's, even the second place. It's overall. it's it's not even the second place. Uh, back then it was back, back then you, it was the overall, and now it's every class you winner. Have no what? You'd, have, you'd have nobody. You'd have nobody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yes. I'm just saying, but the but the lineups were hella strong when it was like yeah. that. It was hella strong. I know, but some is that's why I'm saying something is obviously wrong. That if we have that many pros and we have that little competitors competing, but like yeah. Yeah. You so know? if you guys are watching this, stop being fucking pussies and compete. Right. Yeah. Just yeah. Not Get your ass on ever. stage. When you look and at that, other categories like classic, it's fucking loaded. Classic loaded. and physique. Classic physique is loaded. That's classic for the next show. How's that? Yeah. So okay. this is what I'm saying. And people want people how, ask me. How about the open? Hold on a second. For the open. For what? Show the so, open. This is so this is classic. Uh-huh. This is 212. <laughs> That's part of it. Full right? page. And then, is this open? Where's the open? Yes. <laughs> is it? Open. Yeah. yeah. Sad. What is that? Heaven. It's, it's, and then it's, people it's, wonder, yeah. people it's wonder, because higher. I remember I've been asked, oh, classic physique is going to take over seven. Advanced bodybuilding. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, wow, six, a lot seven, of 212. eight, nine, 10, 11. 15, 212, seven open. And there's got to be, how many? And twenty eight. Yeah, classes. but they're giving two two pro cards to classic physique at junior nationals. Like they do so, stuff like that. Milos, yeah, class. is classic going to take over? No, I mean, listen, it's a beautiful division. It's a beautiful division, and uh, I, I command it. No, I, listen, but you you I see, like you see the way it's been going. What you see the way it's been going though? Don't you think in a couple of years, I mean, you might talk because they're just classic. getting those guys bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, yeah. Uh, it's hard to say. Open bodybuilding is open bodybuilding. Yeah. It's still IFBB stands for International Federation of Bodybuilders. So this is a bread and butter. It's never going to change. But it's depressing that six, seven people are showing up at the show. And, uh, you know, anybody can qualify for Olympia. Back in 90s, good luck qualifying for the Olympia, right? right? Yeah. 2000, you know. So, you know, if you're Olympian, you're something else. You right. know, and now this is watered down. I, I don't know. Of course, uh, I can't say don't promote the show, don't make the show. But uh, here is an example. Tampa. I mean, you competed in Tampa, uh, guy, guy, right? Uh, Dennis, you competed too, right? Several times. Yeah, several, several times. times. So it's a big show, right? Yeah, it's a nice show. Uh, yeah. It's always and good I, because it's always a qualifier that's close to the Olympia. Yep. yep. You, you won that show, right, Dennis? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Beat uh, Flood, right? <laughs> yeah. No, no. At Tampa, in, in Tampa, I beat Ford. Yeah. In 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 Dallas, Ford was not even. He was fourth, I think. But no. But anyways, the thing is, who as a promoter is going to invest in putting the show on when you have no competitors? Not me. Yeah. Not me. It's and not then it's your promoter of the show. So That's what I'm telling that... you. I said, why would you want to put? Because here's here's the thing. When it comes to pro show. You know, it's hard to make money with pro shows if you add it to an amateur event. You always make money with the amateurs, but with pros because you have to have big names. Now, if you don't have big names 
and you have six, seven, eight, nine guys that no one knows, it's not going to sell you extra tickets. And you still have to pay the fee. So hey. if you put a pro show on, you want to, you have, you have to make it somewhat interesting for the guys with the bigger names. Okay. And if you put the pro show but, on, you got to have money in escrow to pay those guys. Whether amateurs, you don't have to pay anybody. Right. Hey. But the thing is, listen, I, I think these guys forget that you're not only competing here to, 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 to make a couple of thousand dollars, you're competing to make it to the biggest stage in the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where is that thought? What, what happened? You know, now, now you want to go. People, I, I, I hear, dude, and, and, and Keon said this years ago. I called him and I made a video about it. Keon said something years ago. And he said he wasn't doing the Olympia because he had mental health issues or yeah. he had mental issues. And he that. said this, he said the stage will always be there. And I called him and I go, that is the dumbest. And I, he'll, 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 I said, that's the dumbest thing anybody's ever said. I said, cause I'm going to tell you something. You could pull out into a fucking a highway today and get hit by a fucking car. That stage ain't there no more, brother. Mm. I said, so this whole, that stage is always going to be there. Bullshit. I go, you got a fucking gap about that big, unless you're like, the black Benjamin button, Dexter Jackson, and can somehow do it till you're 50, which is not really fucking something that a lot of people do. Cause once you hit 40, you're pretty much fucking you're, 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 you're a barrel. Uh, the the, 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 the waist is going to get wider. The legs are going to get it. smaller. That's it. So like it's the stage change. isn't going to always be there because I competed, retired and my it's over. And it's like my fucking eyes blinked and it's over. Hmm. That's it. Yeah. Over. Done. Yeah. It's true. It's so, true. Uh, Dennis, how did the Seru bring Kai Green, Phil Heath, Jay Cutler, Dennis Wolf? Yeah. I did that show. I was huh? there. I, yeah. I competed in Seru Classic okay. twice. So why did those guys go there? Why? Because they got paid. By just invitation? Some of them. <laughs> why, why did, Dennis, you know a little bit more details. Why didn't you say so? So they got paid to go there, right? No, I did, yeah, they probably paid their ways, yeah. <laughs> I don't know for sure. <laughs> hey, hey, come on. We all know. So maybe that's what the promoters need to do. Pay some top Yeah, guys. but how are you going to... Listen, even if you paid it, you know, but hey, think about it. It's yeah. different if you can have... If you have a you show... You could say, let's say, if you're top 10 in the Olympia, any show that you guys do, a promoter will cover your expenses if you're a top 10 in the world. Yeah. To, it, because it, that'll bring attention to the show. I don't know if show. it's the top 10... Yeah, whatever. But top, the, top 10 should be. Was, whatever. Was, well, should be. Yeah, yeah, but even like in, in uh, Australia, you know, we, they took care Milos, of... Milos, Milos, I don't it's think it's... Guy, ex, huh? It's not the expenses that make people go to shows. It's the price money, okay? If you pay yeah, yeah. my way, if you pay my way, or if you pay the top 10, why I'm flying all the way over there to end up in ninth or in 10th, I'm not getting nothing. So, but if the price money is up there, yeah, you know, and you see a reason to go there, you know... Well... On that note, now but, that you brought this, uh, I think I agree with you 100%. Top 10 from Olympia should be invited to any show, any promoter should pay for their flight if they choose to compete. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, yeah that's but, a very Yeah, but then some of these guys... And then ra raise the prize money. Yeah, but listen, then, it, then this is going to cost you, let's say you raise the prize money, so you got to have 100000 to make these guys even want to show up. So that's a hundred thousand prize money. Now you got to bring ten guys in. That's another. No, no, you don't have. No, no, no. You don't have to bring ten guys. But you're saying is, let's say one show, two guys from the Olympia that were top ten want to do it. They get their their stuff covered because they were top ten. They're going to bring ticket sales. People are going to come watch them. They're a higher ticket item. They're, uh, you know, they're they're an mm. upper echelon of competitor. I mean, what other sport are you the best in the world? And you're at the Olympia, and you still have to pay your way to go places. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I, I, I get mean, that. Dude, I get that. Let's, let's, I get that. You know? It's still. But as a promoter, you want to you're trying to make money or well, so here, at on. least break even. You, if if all your shows were paid for in the position you're in at the at, at, like you know where you are in your bodybuilding career, yeah. what would be for in somebody in your position, right? You, you're you're a brand new pro. Would the higher prize money, or if the, they were like, hey, anybody that does a show, we're going to cover your all your expenses. What's draw me more. Yeah, is if they were going to pay my way. Say so it's different for everybody. If they were going to pay, but that's, I mean, that's me being at where I am. But right? that's my point. Not at, most people are not up here in the body right. world. Most people are in the middle or here. Yeah. I mean, look, if it's, if it's like this next year, the IFBB has to do something. Like, I don't know if that's the answer, but something's got to be done. Yeah. You can't have six people at Tampa, like, you know, open. That's just stupid. 
Yeah. No. Doesn't look and good. It doesn't look good. Do you, you think they'll start not even having an open class at some shows? Yeah. Come on. Then, right? how, how do we qualify for the Olympia then? I know. With the top, yeah, like, with the top no, no, but there, last but Pittsburgh. Year? There are, shows with no, there are shows with no open bodybuilding in it. Yeah, Pittsburgh. Yeah, there's a I lot mean, there's of shows bunch, with no open bodybuilding because Atlanta, open bodybuilding costs yeah. more than any other category. That's why. Yeah, yeah. You know, and a lot of promoters, they can't afford it. It's like, I can't afford to put an extra 30000 to have a category. Yeah. And, and later on, I'm, it's coming out of my pocket and I'm losing. Yeah. I, was, yeah. I'm, I was friends with the uh, late Jack Sassman who owned or who ran the Lehigh Valley Championships. He did the Keystone Pro one year. And I asked him before he passed away, why didn't you do it again? He said he lost 60 grand that year, making it a pro-am. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. And he made it a pro-am, which was smart yeah. because he made some money off the amateurs. Because if yeah. you just do a pro show, you're going to lose your ass. Mm -hmm. It was a good so, show too. And, in order, and, and, this, and we will only get these pro shows back if these guys start competing again. Yeah. Right. But we did, we did shows with that in mind. Like, we got to keep the sport going. We got to compete. I never we went to any, I never we went to a show thinking about the prize money, ever. No, no I'm saying never. like, we had, I'm saying like, when we went to Europe, it was like, man, we got to keep this going. We got to keep going. Yeah. We got to keep doing it. I never in yeah. mil, in that one time, I, going. I say, oh, I'm going to compete there because I'm trying to get this money. I always went for hey. it to qualify. <laughs> and doing 10 shows a year, that's like, <laughs> it ain't easy, but I was doing it. If you're a good pro, every time you go to a show, the answer is I'm trying to qualify for the Olympia, not I'm trying That's to win it. ten grand or exactly. five grand or three grand. Exactly. Nobody says that. Exactly. Hey, I lost seventy one times, right? <laughs> Knowingly. <laughs> Knowingly. Okay. I'm gonna go in and have my, you know, ass handed to me and I'm gonna make a thousand at best. <laughs> and spend ten thousand preparing. Yeah. That's all right. I'm a pro. I want to stand next to Chris Cormier and Ronnie and Kevin and Flex, right? So what? Yeah. Was my it, it, it I was off. on the stage with them. Right. Yeah. Well, it pays off in other ways, right? Guys, yeah. that brings us to our end. Guy, man, I appreciate you, man. Thank you for making Absolutely. the time. And I'm sorry, what was your name again? Bob, Bob. Th thanks Bob, for not thank you for chiming off. in. Was, We're looking forward man. to your pro debut. Appreciate you. Okay? We're looking forward you. to your Bob. pro debut. So don't, let it, don't keep us waiting, my man. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll have coach keep Be waiting. There Tick you go. Bob. All Tick right. Chris Milos, appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. All right, All right guys. guys. All right, man. Yeah. <laughs>